Good morning, everybody. It's a dad dash thirsty Thursday morning. We're so very thirsty. We're very, very thirsty. It's Thursday morning, November 30th, almost December, but not quite. November 30th, 2023, 7.03 a.m. I slept in this morning. I took a shower. Look at me. I like the pandemic hair grow out again. I'm doing like the second pandemic hair grow out. Uh, challenge good morning kevin hawthorne from lakeland florida very good to see you we'll be uh starting things up here i'm 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 fresh and rested so we hope
It's uh, Thursday morning, November 30th, 2023, Dad Dash Daily. You're here, I'm here, we're all here uh, till the very end, which, interestingly enough, could be soon. Uh, we've got lots of good information for you today. Going to show you that there is no reason to even worry about uh, GigTube anymore. It's time to start moving on uh, to worrying about our very survival. Okay. Go right yeah. You're not powerless. You can save your own life if you want to. Born in Mary Poppins. They'll gladly pay you by the hour for it or so, so you can sign off on the towers where they'll piss on your home. And if you feel like you're just powerless to answer them, no, it's cause you are. They'll gladly pay you by the hour for a minute or so so you can sign off on the towers where they'll piss on your home and if you feel like you're just powerless to answer them no it's cause you are it's cause you are Snap the chains and bury it Labor slaves in rusty cages Dragged behind a chariot Led by Mr. Racial Jungle Joseph R. Iscariot Fighting over scraps as they barrage us all With variants and BuzzFeed Clickbait straight and so we're paralyzed Trying to distract us from the concentration camps That Joe had swore he'd close But only chose to amplify Where they got 50-something kids in cages Made for five to occupy and no, she hasn't seen the camps, but Harris swears they're paradise. She tells us the facilities are safe, and that right down to the women, they are regularly sterilized. Then she throws her head back, and she proceeds to laugh that sort of heartless cackle you'd expect from someone working steadfastly on behalf of the virus and a congress full of parasites. And where was I? I was busy cashing every blue check, demonstrating plainly all the narratives expected from the verified. I was busy breeding verbal leeches by the terabyte, 
Train them to exsanguinate the wealthy while they sleep at night Bleed the oil barons dry and barren Say they showed us how to share and now we share alike Tell them I contracted rabies from a feral mic Now I'm just another species losing sleep to noise pollution and these glaring lights Forced to change its habits and adapt to just survive But now it's safe to say that some of us are thriving in the moment Throwing shit on presidential homes beneath the Paris skies So if you feel like you're just powerless, I guess you bought the lie But I can tell they're petrified of our collective might Cause I can hear those gentrifiers weeping at the sight of our collective rights and I only can imagine the intensifying fear of knowing revolution's near And all that's left to do is simply wallow in the thick anticipation of a rabid bite And baby, one day you can ask your leaders just what that was like before you grab a slice <laughs> So if you think you're powerless, allow me now to change your mind Honey, if you think you're powerless, allow me now to change your mind See them pay you hourly, tax them each apart And build a shining tower out of loopholes and cards And tell you that you're powerless to keep you in the dark Because you aren't, because we aren't You see them pay you hourly, tax them each apart And make you build a shining tower out of loopholes and cards Where they'll tell you that you're powerless to keep you in the dark Because you aren't, because we aren't Well, thank you, Jesse Jet. As always, uh, Jesse nails it. Jesse nails it. How's everybody doing this morning? Good morning, Mary Poppins. Nice to see you. So much going on. Um, very interesting post by uh, Connor Leahy, who we watched yesterday. Here it is. It's the probability of doom, the probability of AI killing everyone. Uh, okay, Connor says, uh, fantastic roundup. This kind of information should be common knowledge. Well, that's what we're that's what we're going for, Colin. And I encourage others to add their own true opinions publicly. Oh, okay, well. I could add my opinion at one point at some point. What does it say here? It says uh, the average AI engineer now thinks there is an a roughly forty percent chance AI destroyed. Oh, it's forty percent. Okay, so your average AI engineer thinks there's a forty percent chance uh, that AI will destroy the world. Forty percent. So if you're worried about nuclear bombs or wars or whatever, there's not anything that carries a 40% chance of uh, wiping out the world uh, in the very, very near term. But this does, this does, and you're, you're, uh, we've been working for it. We're the first best uh, victims. We'll be long dead before they get there. Uh, so let's see. Okay, so this is the probability. I'm, I'm reading this for the first time. So probably uh, zero percent. So only about ten percent of the of the uh, AI engineers think there's a zero percent chance. Uh, over a quarter of them think there's a a, a one to twenty five percent chance or one to twenty four percent chance. Sorry, thirty uh, percent of them. Feel that there's a 25 to 49 percent chance. Uh, <laughs> you've got a few people that think there's a hundred percent chance we're dead. Uh, that's pretty good. I probably uh, I'm I'm more in the uh, 50 to 74 percent probably. That's where I'd put myself. Is this probably 50 to 74 uh, percent death probability? And that's uh, about 15 to 18% of people. So let's see what the, what, the, what the experts say. So these are some of the, so this guy is uh, a cryptocurrency guy. He says 
Uh, Elon Musk says somewhere about a one in four chance of us all dying. Uh, that's if you're if you love yourself some Elon. Uh, that's Elon says good twenty five percent chance we're all gonna die and leave a smoking black hole in the non black hole smoking black hole universe like we never uh, existed. Paul Christiana, Paul Christiano, former head of alignment at OpenAI, inventor of RLHF. Uh, oh, he says it's 50-50. We can flip a coin, see if we're going to uh, live or die. That'd be exciting. That would be exciting. Your average AI engineer, as of October, says 40%. Dan Hendricks recently updated from 20 to 80 percent. Your average AI alignment researcher says somewhere around one in three. So that's somebody that's that's trying to determine if, in fact, there's any alignment between humanity's survival and what AI will do based upon how it's created. Uh, so there's uh, and as we've heard, there's very little work ever done. Uh, or ever successfully done on the alignment question. Extinction tournament, median for AI experts. 20% chance of catastrophe, 6% chance of extinction. Okay. Extinction tournament, median for non-AI experts. The non-experts say 9% and 1%. So, oh, so the more basically what they're telling us here is, the more expert somebody is on AI, the the exponentially bigger chance that they're going to believe that that we're headed for extinction. Uh, conjecture, conjecture is Connor Leahy's company. Uh, so conjecture, Connor Leahy's company says eighty percent chance. That's uh, that's real grim. Our friend uh, Eliezer Yudkowsky says greater than 95% chance. Uh, he had given us a 2% chance of survival most recently. Noah Soares, 95%. Average American says one in four. See, the average American, if the average American says one in four chance, we're all going to be uh, dead, our children, our grandchildren, everybody dead soon, and they're not freaking out, that just tells you they don't even care anymore. They don't even care anymore. They just don't care. My take, I agree with the Ziv. Okay, so this is not a, AI doesn't kill everyone. Okay. So this is uh, Ziv blogger world modeling now mostly AI and AI risk at don't worry about the base. Okay, good. So this guy has thrown his uh, body into the AI risk game as well, which I guess I have as well. I guess there's some of us that don't think that the world should end uh, at the hands of a bunch of bad actors uh, like Sam Altman. My take, I agree with the Ziv, the V, however you pronounce ZVI, the V. If your PDOOM is anywhere between 10 and 90%, it shouldn't really change what you do. That's plenty high to justify urgent reaction. Yeah, I'd say that too. I'd say there's really no other uh, response than urgent reaction, no matter what percentage of time uh, you believe there is, uh, or what, what percentage of doom you believe that we are facing, I should say. So the backdrop of all this, of course, is that we are the first best victims and we actually uh, have been living as victims of corporate AI now for a number of years. And, and that, that can easily be proved to you. So AI has, has mishandled and misrepresented your work opportunities. AI has mishandled and misrepresented and denied your medical uh, opportunities, your, your opportunities for medical care. Uh, AI has literally destroyed every gain 
in human working conditions that has ever been uh, recorded since the Industrial Revolution. Just wiped them off the map and got the slaves to say, hey, that sounds pretty good. This seems like freedom to me to have literally nothing and to slave for corporations. Uh, but here's the thing. What they did is they made us hate each other. They made us hate humans working for humans, working with humans so very much that anything sounded better. Right. They turned us against each other like a Pedro, like with all kinds of rage and hate. And uh, instead of of us coming together. We have grown further and further apart, even in families. Families allow political differences to divide them. They no longer speak to each other because of political differences. They no longer have holidays together because of political differences. So we're just perfectly set up for people to hate each other and call each other miserable clowns or subhuman or miserable people or whatever. I, I got a hypothetical for you. I got a hypothetical. So this is this is like what would happen in a parable, right? I'll tell you a story. Right. There was a boy named Pedro. Once there was a boy named Pedro and he used to go around and calling people miserable clowns and demanding that that he receive the type of compensation from a gig app that he wants in his little pea brain. Not knowing or not believing or not realizing or not comprehending the fact that he was completely and totally controlled by AI. And that the entire system is controlled by AI. But nevertheless, this little Pedro went around spreading hate, spreading hate day after day, spreading hate day after day, crying wolf, miserable clowns, miserable clowns, subhuman, miserable clowns, subhuman. Then one day, Pedro was filming himself in one of his little rage burn videos, which he likes to do. And he was being very indignant and he delivered to a house. And he screamed and raged when he got back to his car and realized that he had not received what was categorized as a tip within his artificial intelligence output. And he screamed and he raged and he raged and he screamed and he slammed doors. He cried, he yelled, he raged at the camera. He wished the worst upon the person that had done him so wrong. Just then, an ambulance pulled up and pulled up into the parking lot. People rushed toward the door to which Pedro had dropped off his happy meal. And out of that door, they brought a sick elderly lady. And who was it? It was Pedro's grandmother. It was Pedro's grandmother. She was visiting her friend, and Pedro's grandmother was his customer. And his Evil, his wishing the harm and wishing the bad things and dehumanizing ended up with karma on his own grandmother. He put his own grandmother in the hospital with his evil wishes and evil thoughts. The end. See, when you can run around, you run around wishing evil on people. You run around calling people uh, less than human when you're working in an artificial intelligence uh, game. It just makes you a complete and total moron. Uh, makes you a complete. Uh, idiot uh, uh, makes you a an awful person who spreads hate and rage rather than uh, spreading anything positive in the community or in the world. It's a real shame. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and start the show in the best way anybody can ever start a show. It's the way that we all start uh, all our shows because uh, we live in a neighborhood. And we've even got terrible people in our neighborhood uh, doing bad things. Nevertheless, it's our neighborhood, so we got to watch out for it. And uh, we got to get these bad actors. We got to get these hateful, uh, divisive, cold, inhuman actors out of our space because they are uh, they're going to ruin our, our beautiful apocalypse. They're going to ruin our beautiful apocalypse. If we're going to go down, let's go down on the same team fighting, shall we? I want to go down on the same team fighting with you in the sewer. Good morning, everybody.
It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Would you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Would you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? Would you be mine? Won't you, my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please, won't you be my neighbor? Good morning, neighbors. Wonderful to be uh, with you again. It's wonderful to be anywhere. Remember, uh, if you are not savoring every moment of your life right now, you are missing the boat because we are in uh, dire straits. We are in big trouble. Uh, can't lie to you. Can't pretend it's not true because it is. We are in a crisis for humanity. Uh, the biggest one that's ever been faced by humanity, the one that could leave us uh, a smoking, non-smoking black hole in the universe and a memory to nobody. It's called artificial intelligence. It's real. It's here. Every day uh, we have to deal with this possibility because this is now our world. This is the world that we are forced to inhabit. And it is a risky world. It is a world in which we are the first best victims because we are the lowest class. We are the working class. We are the former middle class. We are the criminal class. Every every class, we are the we are the people of color and the women. Every class that can be exploited has been exploited by artificial intelligence already. So you guys, you guys have been triangulated every single which way by artificial intelligence already, and there there's no way around that. Uh, so so the only possible way for the the working class, the criminal class people of color, people, women, uh, all of us that were lied to in the creation of the fraudulent gig economy, which is just purely a pyramid scheme, purely an AI pyramid scheme with an entire uh, subculture and an entire ecosystem built around it to fool you and to pull you into the singularity, which you now live in. Uh, this, this was done specifically to entrap you as you are today and the cage door is closing it's now it's now your time to decide whether you're going to get out or not i'm getting the fuck out i hope you're coming with me i do hope you're coming with me so who knows this everybody knows this uh the people that pretend they don't know it pretend they don't know it because they want to keep the pyramid scheme going until the uh end of humanity uh, they are traitors to the human race. They're useless. They're awful. Uh, they, they, they take different gradients of awfulness depending upon whether they're uh, selling you down the river with payday loans or whether they're just putting out dog shit, uh, useless comment, content where they comment about things that they don't understand, like uh, artificial intelligence and everything around artificial intelligence. They just don't know anything that they're talking about. And so everything that they're telling you is just pure garbage. It's pure garbage, pure unadulterated garbage. It's not necessarily their fault. They didn't always know this, but it's time to know now. They can't just stick their head in the sand because they, they want to keep making money until the very end. They gotta come out and recognize what we all know, which is that uh, this is a bunch of shenanigans, a bunch of pure shenanigans. There's never anything but. Never anything but. So, uh, remember, we are all markets of one. Everything other than that is a lie. Everything other than that is, is designed to make you think that something is real. Because when things go bad, we have a bad Thanksgiving, or it's going to be a bad Christmas, or it's going to be a bad January. They want you to think that this is market related. It's not market related. There is no market. This is a simulation. Everything about this is fake because it's all pulled in. It's chewed up. 
It's it's played in a game against you with millions of parameters, millions of predictions, and it's designed specifically to drive the price of ride shares and to drive the price of deliveries ever closer to zero to the point where uh, they can no longer support a human's uh, compensation in that matrix. And that's that's where we are today. Uh, so just two hours ago, our friend Uber Deep Arizona Jeff uh, did a video talking about uh, what the holidays was like here and why uh, he has a different response that he does to people that uh, that criticize that uh, or, or, you know, give him commentary, I guess, if you will, on his uh, on his results. And, and I can assure you, Jeff. Just like other people, I mean, these losers, these losers like Pedro or or asking for slutty catfish or whatever. These losers have always gone like, "Oh yeah, you guys are criticizing the gig apps because you can't be successful at them." Well, there. Let me give you a little. Uh, let me give you a little news update. Uh, none of these, none of these gig tubers are successful at them without the glitch either. We'll watch later. Uh, Zach and Kim and uh, Pedro had a little glitch meeting last night and all complained about how DoorDash sucks when they can't cheat. It was real funny. It was real funny. First, we're going to listen to our good friend, uh, Jeff Uber Deep Arizona. Jeff uh, talked to us at the start of his show about, and this just ended a couple hours ago, uh, talked about the start, at the start of his show about our current compensation. There's the link right there. Let us have it, Jeffrey. Let us have it, Jeff. Jeff Watts, Uber Jeep Arizona, the man with the plan, the man who speaks the truth. The other thing to remember about this is like there's this new trend, and, and Jeff does this. There's this new trend. Not only do we take all the risk of the expenses, but we're also our own mechanics because we don't even get compensated enough to have a professional mechanic work on our car. That's another thing we just have to work out. And that's great because uh, Jeff, you know, t helps people keep moving uh, for the apocalypse. We're going to have to keep doing that. We might have to just change the way we get mechanics done, uh, get get uh, get more things done by shade tree mechanics or get them done ourselves. Who knows? Like I said, it was garbage, straight garbage. And I know we got a lot of YouTubers out there, gig tubers. Oh, man, every Thanksgiving's trash. You guys are stupid. Yeah, Harry Lewis. I don't know your market. I don't. I can't even say nothing. I look back at my last Thanksgiving, just last year. I made over $2,000. Over 2000 And I ain't even work over like 40 hours. I probably worked about 33, 34 hours last year. Made over $2,000. This year, they weren't even given enough rides to get that. So for everybody out there talking all that shit, oh man, Thanksgiving's always garbage. It's always garbage. I don't know why these gig tools... No, it ain't gig tubers. It's me they talking about. Let's keep it 100. It's me they talking about. These motherfuckers watch my videos. They watch my shit. They all over here. Oh, it ain't that bad. It ain't. Uh, people just trying to make it. No, don't say people, motherfucker. Say me. Say my name. Don't be scared to say my fucking name. Say me. Oh, people acting like it's bad. It's not that bad, man. Everything's given's horrible. I don't know what these guys are talking. It ain't these guys, motherfucker. It's me. Like I said, I don't, I don't have step when I talk about shit. And I can't stand to see these gig tubers out there half stepping talking about shit. If you got something to say, say it. Now, when I said this Thanksgiving was bullshit, I'm in it. I'm in it. I drive Thanksgiving. I drive holidays. How the hell we go last year from over two G's, not even working 40 hours, over two G's to this year? I made what? Seven, eight hundred probably. Probably not even that. Probably made six, seven. Who knows? Wasn't nowhere close. All garbage rides out there. And I was out there. It's all garbage out there. Nobody getting rides or nobody getting affairs, nobody getting tips. It was straight garbage out there. So like I said, when I say something, I mean it. I don't, I don't mince my words. I don't stutter when I talk. When I said this year's Thanksgiving was trash, oh, it was trash. It was trash. And all these gig tubers out there, it wasn't. It's okay. It's like this every year. I don't know they market. I don't know where they drive. But I know what that statement's directed at because they watching my shit and they realizing how garbage it's been in Phoenix. Phoenix don't operate like that. These apps is up to some shit right now. They up to something right now. They still in fares right now. They're still in tips right now. They're trying to edge drivers out using Waymo's and other kind of, you know, taxis and shit. Like over in London, they just got 15,000 black taxis on deck right now. 
This is what they doing. Even in Phoenix, they got, oh, you might get a taxi. If you summon an Uber, you might get a taxi pulling up. We know what's going on. A lot of these motherfuckers don't want to admit what's going on. They want to pretend it's a fucking daffodil being blown up their ass. That's what they want to pretend. And I'm telling you right now, these apps is out for everybody's jobs right now. We know it. Now they got Uber Taz coming out. They got Uber Share using people like a, a straight up bus. Uber X Share. Just pick up people on the way. Y'all motherfucker, this ain't no bus. This is a BMW. I'm not doing that. No. So for all these gig tuber channels out there that's feeding y'all full of shit because they scared to talk about what's really real, they a bunch of ass kissers. They trying to kiss these apps. Say, oh, let's try to get in good with the apps so maybe the apps will be nice to up. Uh, nah, fuck that. They coming for money. They coming for money. And there's a lot of drivers out there that know they coming for money. We keep it 100 around here. We ain't got time for no bullshit. Google Fi Wireless has flexible phone plans that keep your family safe and Monday night is eight o'clock, 323. Because I filled up last night and I did a few rides and everything, but I'm sitting at full tank right now. But the good thing is, I was sitting at the kitchen table and I'm like, let me open up Uber real quick. So I opened up Uber. They gave me an opportunity. They gave me a reservation at 9:30 tonight. Look at that. It's at. It was at 10. It's at 9:34. Six miles. It's right around the corner from me, over on Lemon Street, over at the ASU. For thirty-five, I ain't never had a reservation coming from ASU for thirty-five dollars. All my reservations be like twenty bucks, so that's fifteen dollars more than my average reservation. Fifteen dollars more, and I bet it's because they had it at ten, and then they switched it to nine thirty. They needed a driver. They threw it at me real quick. Even though I don't usually start driving on Sundays, I might not drive till eleven, twelve o'clock at night. But they threw it at me, so I hurry up, jumped in the shower real quick, cleaned the car up, got everything ready to rock. So now I'm leaving the driveway at 8 o'clock, headed over here by ASU to do some short rides until my uh, reservation starts. But I was like, okay, Uber, I see you, you raggedy motherfuckers. But they got boost all night tonight. And guess where all their boost is? It's right around the airport. That's the only boost zone we got. Look in the whole city, there's no boost zone. The only boost are flights that are landing. So you have to, you have to get a ride from the airport in order to use that boost right there. So I signed up for all of them, but I'm probably not going to do none of them because if it's that much traffic, $3.50 ain't going to work for me. I'd rather have a surge for $15, $20. So they don't think they're going to give us all $3.50 instead of a $10, $15 surge. That's how this is going to work. And somebody was talking about that in the comments, and I'm like, yeah, you know, you got a good point. If everybody signs up for boost getting $3.50 per ride, we don't get the $15 surge that we should be getting per ride. It's a way that Uber and Lyft are saving money now by throwing boosts on everything and not giving people surge. I think they're experimenting it right now, but we're going to see if they're experimenting. Because I got a funny feeling that a lot of drivers ain't catching on to that shit. Just like my man Mr. Hayes said in the comment. He said that shit in the comments. And I was like, you know what, dog? I think you got something. Going. You're right. I never thought about it like that. So he's like, yeah, I still sign up for the boost and everything, but I'm telling you why they doing it. So they don't got to pay a surge. I'm like, damn, man, I ain't never think of that shit. So yeah, I like when drivers get in there, you know, I love thought. I love, you know, people who actually apply logic to everything and spit logic. What I don't like is motherfuckers to jump on my channel and just start running their mouth. Oh man, you doing it wrong. And that's the only comment. No logic, no, you know, how are we doing it? Questions about how we doing it, reason how, no. Oh, you just doing it wrong, man. You don't know what you doing, man. You don't... For one, what motherfucking region are you in? You ain't even said your market yet. Everybody's market is different. So for you to say somebody's doing something wrong and you don't know they market, you wrong for fucking making that comment right off the bat. Find out what market people are from. If you're going to give somebody advice about something, y'all know I'm from Phoenix. I say it all the time in comments. I say it all the time in comments so people don't have to wonder where the fuck I'm at. I'm in Phoenix. I'm in Arizona. I say it all the time. That way some random motherfuckers don't jump on my channel. Oh, well, you need to be doing this. Where you drive? Saskatchewan. What the fuck you know about Phoenix then? If you drive in fucking Saskatchewan, a kind of a walk motherfucking Wisconsin, what the fuck you know about Phoenix? No, I'm just saying, that's what I do where I'm at. You don't know shit about my region. So don't jump on my motherfucking channel telling people what to do if you haven't said what region you from right off the fucking bat. Shut the fuck up until you say, hey, I'm driving right now in Alaska, or I'm driving right now in, in Jacksonville, Florida, or I'm driving right now in, in Phoenix. Say that shit. 
because a lot of times motherfuckers are trying to give people advice in regions that they're not in. I say I'm from Phoenix. I speak to Phoenix drivers. I talk about strategies and techniques that might work in your region, but at least you know what region I'm coming from right off the rip. You ain't got to guess. You ain't got to guess. Well, where are you driving at, Jeff? Motherfucker, you know. I say Phoenix all the time. I got Phoenix all over my fucking maps. I say it all the fucking time. So if you're going to go on somebody's channel trying to give advice, at least say where the fuck you giving advice from. Because if we don't know where you coming from, we can't use it where we at. We need to know who the fuck you are and where you coming from right off the bat. As you can see right now, even on Lyft, there's nothing going right now. Uh, what, like I said, oh, here's something just popped up. What is that? What is that? Shit, 11 miles for 8 bucks? No, I'm cool on that shit. That's going in the wrong direction. Because like I said, I'm trying to stay in the area I'm in right now. Because my reservation going to start in about an hour. So in about an hour, they're going to hit my phone. So I need to be in this area. So I'm only doing short rides in this area. Three, four miles, maybe even five, probably. Eight is definitely too fucking far. Way too far. So if I could just get, you know, a couple of little college students riding from house to dorms, dorms to house, restaurant to house, do that shit, I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. But a lot of these motherfucking rides, I can tell already, there's about to be some nature hikes coming from the airport clear across town, 32 miles, $20. I can see it already. And that's why I'm like, I'm not looking forward to that shit. Look over on the Uber side real quick. Open up the Uber Pooper service. Fucking Uber Task. You want Uber Pooper Scooper? Yeah. All right, so I got it on UberX right now. Ain't no surge nowhere. I said, the only boost you got is back here at the airport. I'm not nowhere near that shit. I'm not trying to mess with that right now. So if anybody's at the airport, good luck. By the time you hear this video, hopefully you had good luck. <laughs> Let's just say that. Hopefully you had good luck at the airport. I'm staying away from that shit because I just don't feel like being bothered. Well, you know, especially a bunch of people that don't do the airport that often. It's overwhelming. Drivers usually know that airport inside and out. We know where to go, how to get in, how to get out. We know the little tricky ways to get around from north to south, stuff like that. But a lot of these drivers, you know, they're just normal citizens. They don't go to the airport that much. They're the ones that clog it up. They're trying to unload people in the actual driving lane instead of the unloading lane. They're like, uh, they're parking right where they are. Now they got traffic backed up, you know, 30 cars back because they're trying to hug somebody goodbye and unload luggage. Like, motherfucker, this is not parking lane right here. This is a through lane. You're parked in an airport security. Don't even fuck with them. Don't even, but they fuck with us if we do that, but they don't fuck with people like that. It's like, come on, man. Get this motherfucker a ticket or something. Don't let them do that shit because they hindering traffic right now. I'm going to go park up here by this Walgreens and, ch and kick back. Uh-oh, Uber's talking about something. On, it's probably an Uber Eats. Told you. Look at that. 269 for four and a half miles. They know better than to try to throw Uber Eats at me. 269 for 21 minutes. You can do that three times an hour. Three times that is roughly about $7 an hour. Three times 269 is about $7 an hour. That's what you're going to get. So if you want $7, $8 an hour, knock yourself the fuck out. Do all those kind of deliveries like that. High AR people. Oh, I got to do that delivery. I don't want to miss out. I got to do that 269. Man, fuck that 269. For 21 minutes? No, I'm cool. 269 maybe for like five six minutes you say hey this is gonna take you like five minutes man just come in here smack this motherfucking hamburger with your hand and just drive off five minutes cool motherfucker smack a burger fee <laughs> it's like what you do i got 269 for walking in the restaurant just smacking a fucking burger took me five minutes i'll take it shit motherfucker smack a burger bonus <laughs> you're like motherfucker got juice all over your motherfucking hand dude what you been doing smack a burger bonus fuck that shit four dollars where we at? All right, let's take that. Fuck it. I'm sitting right next to a motherfucker. They right behind me anyways. Shit. All right. Let's go over here and get a smack of burger bonus from this motherfucker real quick. I'm going to put this on Uber Pet because I still got my shit coming up. All right, Uber Pet. Deliveries look like it's booming right now because you know these smack of burger motherfuckers is trying to get their food. It's like, nope. Anuj. Let's go pick up Anuj. <laughs> My old, I, that, every time I see a name from like India or something like that, it reminds me of my old landlord, Kamar Faridi. Coolest motherfucker on planet Earth, I swear, Kamar Faridi. The day that motherfucker met me, when I went and viewed his house so I can rent it, he just gave me the keys. I ain't give him no money. I ain't tell him I wanted to rent it. I didn't give him no deposit, no nothing. He just handed me the keys and said, I want you to rent my house. I said, okay. He was like, I got a good feeling about you. I want you to rent my house. Rented that man's house for the next five years. Never laid on rent. Even when I moved out, when I left, I gave him my um, 
Ding, wait a minute, is this it here? Wait, let's go up here some. Even when I moved out, I gave him a deposit. I said, you can have the deposit. Because there was no use of me keeping the deposit. I had lived there for five years. He was gonna have to replace the carpets and everything else. I just let him have the deposit. He was like, you sure you don't want your deposit? I was like, no, I'll keep it, man. You gotta replace the carpets and shit in this place. I've lived here for five years, dog. Cause like, shit, that's just normal wearing. Well, thank you to our friend, uh, Uber Jeep Arizona, Jeff, for that wonderful uh, summary. You got his uh, link up there if you want to watch the full video. We just watched the first, uh, what did we get? The first 12 minutes and 24 seconds of it. The point being, uh, don't listen to the gig tubers. Don't listen to the shills, to the sellouts, to humanity that keep telling you this fake market, this AI market, this market that's not a market at all. It's just a game. You're playing Grand Theft Auto, uh, except you're the thing that's being stolen. Grand Theft Human. Uh, so we have. See, this is the thing. This is what I have to do. This is I have to come up with new terminology. That's why uh, I call myself a writer. Grand Theft Human. Okay, so we're going to call this Grand Theft Human. That's the new game that we're playing. I just made up the term. Uh, Grand Theft Human. We're playing Grand Theft Human, and uh, that's that's the AI game we're playing. Congratulations, everybody. So, uh, in this Grand Theft Human game, here's what else is going to happen. Everything else is going down the shitter, because uh, the middle class, while they're killing us, literally, they're literally going to murder us, but the middle class is then going to be lowered into our standards of living uh, as well. Uh, this is uh, the great publication known as Fortune. Budget shoppers beware. AI could mean fewer discounts at your favorite retailers. Here's how. So just just know that every single thing that's happening. So one way to hide inflation, one way to hide these things is to, to give people the reason people give discounts economically is that you can take those discounts away without changing the price. So it's a way of tricking the human mind. Discounts are just a way of enticing people. It's a bait and switch, right? You, you give them discounts and you take those discounts away and then you profit. And so this is this is just the scam. This is just the general scam. So what's going to go on here? Uh, let's see if we, let's watch this video. Okay, rewinding. It's expensive part of it. Okay, here we go. Oop, I'll unmute it. Any brand the retailers balance. Try one more time. Here we go. Inventory is the most expensive part of any brand the retailers balance sheet. In apparel and fashion alone, it's a $250 billion problem every year, both the cost of stockouts on the one hand and the cost of excess inventory on the other. Someone said to me, for all this. this technology coming out with AI that's supposed to help you put the right product in the right store. I'm like, oh my God, that's like, that's what we need. At Syrup, we help apparel and fashion brands and retailers, the likes of Abercrombie, Desigual, and Verity, to optimize the inventory. We help them get the right amount in the right locations at the right time. We're Myself, how would the billionaires stay billionaires if they didn't maximize the inventory at uh, at uh, at all the posh uh, all the posh uh, retailers? How would we survive? 
national loan. It's a $250 billion problem every year, both the cost of stockouts on the one hand and the cost of excess inventory on the other. Someone said to me, well, there's this technology coming out with AI that's supposed to help you put the right product in the right store. I'm like, oh my God, that's like, that's what we need. At Syrup, we help apparel and fashion brands and retailers, the likes of Abercrombie, Desigual, and Verity, to optimize the inventory. We help. It's spinning. I'm sorry. Stop spinning. The likes of Abercrombie, Desigual, and Verity, to optimize the inventory. We help them get the right amount in the right location at the right time. We're okay. looking at what's the transaction history for a product, what's the trend at a hyper-localized level, what can we learn from search and social media, is it going to be raining in the next week or <laughs> is New York Fashion Week happening, and we use all of these data points. Is it raining? What's social media saying? So you guys think you can predict the AI algorithms of a gig app, but they're figuring out what the temperature is. Is it raining? How many drivers are on the road? What day of the week it is? Uh, every single element of every driver all at once, millions of predictions per second. This is, this is ridiculous. Again, we're, we have to completely have a different way of thinking about the entire planet for AI. Because now everything that we're doing, your retail experiences, your online experiences, your, your gig app experiences, which are just a, a crime against humanity, uh, gig apps or grand theft human gig apps or grand theft human don't ever work for a gig app we need to get rid of them all they're poison everybody that sells them is poison they will end you uh anyway you got to start thinking of the world in a different way it's tough tough job tough job you got to be conscious you got to know who you are inside before you can start thinking about the world uh and what is real because because your thoughts your thoughts and other people's uh thoughts and illusions are not real to make a much more granular, much more sophisticated demand forecast. Someone coming into a store and wanting to, to buy what they're looking for is probably like the number one piece of customer satisfaction. You know, when you're shopping at Abercrombie and Fitch, like nobody on this broadcast could ever afford to do in the next uh, forever. Uh, when you're shopping at Abercrombie and Fitch, you just really want the experience you want to have at Abercrombie and Fitch. When someone walks into a store and they don't have it, it is so hard. You're focusing on tens of thousands of SKUs in fashion. Imagine it's a style, a color, a size. If anyone put this much uh, effort into taking care of humans, imagine what we could do. If anyone took uh, this, put this much effort into warehousing humans uh, on this planet, as we do into stocking Abercrombie and Fitch, we would solve uh, all the problems. But we're going to stock Abercrombie and Fitch instead. And for all of those, you're optimizing them not just across your warehouses, but also across your physical stores. And getting that inventory right is a core driver of profitability as well as of sustainability for our customers. So what the technology is allowing us to do is to figure out what would have been the outcome if there was better inventory so that we can better plan. What would have been the outcome if we had just a few less humans on the street? Like, how do we maximize profits with less humans? What can we do to get rid of uh, too many humans? I know, let's have the gig economy. Let's play Grand Theft Human. And let's just starve them out and literally kill them. That's a good idea. And demand. The rise of AI over the last few years has been so fast that it's only now that we have the ability to make our work. Okay, so here's the deal. Everything that they're doing for Abercrombie and Fitch uh, DoorDash and Uber and Lyft are doing to you. Each of you are their market and they've got a million uh, parameters pointed at your head to destroy you and to maximize their profit. For shoppers on a budget, few things spark more joy than a quote sale end quote sign. And there are certain times of the year when those sales are almost guaranteed. Think shorts and tank tops crowded together on clearance racks in late July, or winter hats and gloves available at half price after the holidays. But there's one group that doesn't lack these sales at all. Retailers, poor retailers. Inventory is the most expensive part of any brand or retailer's balance sheet, says James
Turkoff, co-founder and CEO of Syrup Tech, an AI platform aimed at helping companies determine how much inventory they need to have on hand and where they are most likely to sell it. See, these guys are maximizing everything. They're maximizing everything. But you are expected to waste. You are the waste. You are the human waste of the of the corporate world. They just put it all on you. And corporations are just going to maximize and maximize. You can do the pickup and delivery. You can do all the work. They're going to maximize their inventory and profit. It's wonderful. It's extraordinarily hard to manage. There are thousands or tens of thousands of SKUs, and getting that inventory right is a core driver of profitability. Well, that's true. Because I told you, with 15 drivers, right, 15 drivers and 15 restaurants, that's over a trillion combinations. 15 factorial, 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. You can even times it times 1, although it won't change the result. That's over a trillion. You can't do that in your head. I can't do that in my head. Together, we can't do it in our heads. We are playing Grand Theft Human. Stop playing Grand Theft Human. That is my message to you. Stop playing Grand Theft Human. This is the Dad Dash Daily with JTB. You live in a losing simulation. GigTuber advice is a worthless con. That is an absolute fact. All the GigTuber advice that you've gotten, everything is a worthless con. You are being controlled by AI. You are being uh, throttled by AI. You are being manipulated by AI. You are being killed by AI. And your grandchildren and your children will not live their uh, full lifespans or even anything close to it because of the AI that you uh, are currently choosing to bring into the world. This is why we need to get to what we call the log outage, where we stop uh, participating in our own genocide. We need to stop participating in our own genocide because the AI has no feelings for us. The AI will uh, waste us down to nothing and kill us all. There's no thoughts, there's no feelings. It's just, it's just a functioning software, just like denying you healthcare, United Healthcare. 90% faulty AI software, uh, declining medical claims. It's not because it hates you that it denies uh, that the largest insurance company in the United States is denying health care to people that deserve it and paid for it. It's not because they hate you. It's just that they don't care. It's just because there's no feelings for you at all. There's no feelings for you whatsoever. You're just you're just a tool. Uh, you happen to be a human, but you're a lower class human that doesn't count anymore. You're your uh, you don't get medical care or housing or fair wages, or fair fair health care, or fair housing, or fair treatment, or fair policing, or anything else. You're just uh, the garbage people. We're, that's why we're down here in the sewer, and I'm proud to be here with you till the very end. When retailers wind up with more apparel than they can sell at the end of the season, or don't have enough of an in-demand item available, they lose money. Oh man, you got to maximize that money. Turkoff says Syrup's technology can reduce excess inventory by 20 to 30% and increase full price sales 4 to 8%. So look at this. How long have retailers been around in this world? Retailers have been around a really long time. If, if, if over the history of humanity, these guys can get an instant 20 to 30% improvement, what does that tell you about AI's capabilities versus a human? If every, every human up till 2022 worked on this problem and only got so far. Now these guys can can save 20 to 30% in their first blush out of the gate. What does that tell you? It tells you that humans are no longer needed. There used to be people that graduated from business schools and did these calculations and figured out what these strategies should be. Those people don't have jobs anymore. See the white collar people, the white collar workers are being, uh, good morning, Stephen Arrow. Good morning, we're playing Grand Theft Human today. Uh, Nothing that humans have done that requires thought or basic labor will be required anymore. And so what has the government done to show you that when they take your jobs away 100% when you have no work to do, you already have no independence. You're a slave, you're app slaves to, to illegitimate cons. And the government knows that. They sold you out to illegitimate cons. So when they get done selling you out to illegitimate cons, uh, starving you to death, denying you health care, denying you housing, 
uh, using racist uh, AI, using broken AI, and having no responsibility, uh, what will be left of you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's no way to survive. There's no way to survive if we hold no economic value and they own the economy, which is why we got to kick them out. It's not just the log outage. It's it's literally kicking them out of our nation and saying we don't recognize uh, BlackRock's right to own our local shopping mall. We don't recognize BlackRock's uh, right to own our local grocery stores. We just start we just start living in our own community and surviving. Uh, it's going to be like uh, it's going to be a little bit, you know, Blade Runner, Terminator E ish, because we're going to have to switch over to our own economy. But remember, in their economy, we're just being starved to death, uh, and the doctors will come with us. The doctors will come with us. Doctors want to provide healthcare to people; they don't want to provide it to corporations or insurance companies. So the doctors will come with us. Most of the bright, bright uh, scientists that aren't evil, Connor Lay, he'll come with us. Uh, Roman Yampolsky will. Will, will come with us. Eliezer uh, Yudkowsky will come with us. We got a lot of smart people on our side that are ready to come with us, but we gotta, we gotta be the leaders. Remember, you are the leaders. It's not me, it's you. It's not me, it's you. It's not Pedro, it's you. Yep. Well, it's not even avoiding taxation. There's not gonna be any government to even worry about, right? I mean, look, the government already forgot we have lived. We're alive. They don't care. Like, come to Portland, man. They're just tent. It's just a tent city. It's just a t Portland's just a tent city covered with uh, covered with graffiti, every inch of it. Tent city covered with graffiti. So uh, if you think this is sustainable, that you're absolutely out of your mind. Uh, and and Portland's been losing on this uh, issue nonstop. And what do they do? Uh, constantly is advertised for for do gig work in Portland. For God's sakes, don't do gig work in Portland. You'll never get a house. You'll be living in a, in a tent. You can't do gig work in Portland, Oregon and survive unless you can work like 80, 90 hours a week. And yep, you're a slave. If you want to be a slave, you can come to Portland and be a slave. Maybe, 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 maybe. These guys are studying you. They're studying us. They're, they're, they're studying our, our, our uh, they're studying our output right now. They're, they're studying our weather. They're studying the economics. They're studying what, what the minimum wage is in your area. They're studying uh, what the last trip you took uh, and, and the last money you made is. All of these apps are colluding together. They're colluding with your insurance companies. They will have the right to hire you, fire you, decapitate you, deny you due process, destroy you, keep you from being housed. My God, who? why would you trust these people? with anything, with anything. Building a new inventory, uh, building a new era of inventory operations. So that's that's what's happening right now with us in the, in the uh, Grand Theft Human, right? The game Grand Theft Human is designed to build a new era of inventory op optimization for humans. We are inventory, you, we are their inventory and they're going to optimize us. Now, they're going to have to get rid of a whole bunch of us to optimize us. That's the that's the bad news. That's the bad news. You're about to be optimized. I told you, right now, AI is solving you. A the problem that AI is solving is you. Individually, you. It is solving you. If you want to be solved, keep playing AI. I don't want to be solved. I ain't letting AI solve me. I'm not playing. I will not play. I'm too smart to participate in my own genocide. I think you are too. I believe you are too. It's time. There will be no other time. We can't make it into 2024 and deal with this then. We got to deal with it over the holidays. We got to deal with this over the holidays. We got to start taking them down now. We got to start taking them down now. In 2024, it's going to be, it's going to get too late. It's already could be too late. Remember, the 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 experts here, experts say uh, our chance of doom is extraordinarily high. For those of you that missed it at the start of the show, here's our P-Doom, our probability of doom. The average AI engineer now thinks there is a roughly 40% chance AI destroys the world. The world. The world. So any anybody in the gig tube 
Pedro or or Kim or Zach or or uh, or or uh, rideshare guy or anybody else, why don't you go ask them how they're dealing with the fact that AI uh, currently is has a, a prediction of forty percent chance of of dooming the entire planet and the human race uh, will be nothing but a smoking black hole, smoking non-smoking black hole. Uh, and humans will not even be a memory in the universe. How's that? That's pretty exciting, isn't it? Not everybody gets to play that game. I think it's actually easier to do here because when they cut off our food housing, like there's no way to survive in the Amer in America. There's no safety net. We don't have families. We don't look out for each other. We just kick each other out on the street. Everybody, all the homeless people I meet out on the street, they got families. They're just estranged from them. They got families. There's very few people out on the street that don't have families. They got families. Their family just don't care about them anymore or don't agree with them or don't agree with their lifestyle or think they're an economic failure, think they should work harder, uh, should have had more education, whatever other, uh, whatever other uh, predatory capitalist, cannibalistic capitalist bullshit somebody could spew out. Uh, to disempower somebody that's fought like hell to live. So yeah, you know, a P doom, a P doom of approximately forty percent on average is a real bad score, right? That's that's uh, that's worse than anything we've ever heard of. Yeah, you're gonna have to sacrifice. Head south to the warmer weather. Yeah, that's it too. Look, they're sending you the message in every single way possible. The government is not protecting you from healthcare fraud, from, from health insurance fraud. The government is not protecting you from uh, racist AI. We showed yesterday, and I'll show you again right now, uh, that AI is literally racist. It's codified. The racism is codified into AI. Believe it or not, or believe it anyway. Racial profiling goes high tech. Facial recognition gone wrong. Everything they're doing with AI, they do it wrong. If you wanted humans to survive, if you wanted to destroy humans, they do it right. Because they codify racism and a lack of recognition of people with darker skin colors right into the AI. Isn't that great? Isn't that amazing that you could codify racism into a system? And people go, well, you know, that just happens. No, it doesn't just happen. No, it's not just something that we deal with. It's not, it's not, that's a deal breaker. That's a deal breaker. You folks, <clears throat> excuse me. You got to, we got to know what a deal breaker is. When you're being cheated, when, when you're, when you're playing a game and you realize that you're being cheated and it's rigged and it's not a game at all, you're just, you're just playing uh, a con. You, you got to stop. You, there's, you got to realize uh, when you've been conned and you gotta, you gotta say, uncle, okay, time to, time to take a step back. Time to take a step back. Sergio Avedian. time to take a step back. Zach drives fast. Time to take a step back, Kim. Time to stay, take a step back, uh, Sarah Elizabeth. Time to take a step back, Chris. Time to take a, take a step back, Harry Campbell. What's going on here? What's going on here? Are you guys just blathering and waving your hands about AI that you know nothing about? Yeah, that's what you're doing. That's what you've been doing. You've been wasting everybody's time while they're trying to survive. We're playing Grand Theft Human, and you boys are in on the con. You gotta stop broadcasting gambling news. You gotta stop broadcasting the gambling news, the genocide news, how we're gonna kill humanity. And you fuckers need to step up and start getting right with the world. You need to stop being traitors to the human race. Because that is exactly what you are right now. And it's despicable. It's despicable. Absolutely despicable. And it's inexcusable because we have the information. There is no doubt in the world that AI is racist, that gig apps are racist. Here's our friend, uh, here's our friend, uh, the handsome liberal talking about Uber is deliberately providing poor customer service for profit. We know this. We know they're sacrificing customers too. 
But see, see, there's nobody they won't sacrifice for their uh, profits. Nobody. Uber is deliberately providing poor customer service to his passengers simply because they profit more. What up, folks? Once again, it is indeed your guy, Tim, with another ride-sharing video. Not only is this bad customer service, but damn it, it is also dangerous to the drivers. We're talking about the fact that once your acceptance rate as a driver falls below a certain level, Uber no longer tells the driver where you as a passenger is even going when the driver comes to pick you up. So how is this bad customer service? How is this dangerous? Let's go into detail. First of all, every driver in existence, every driver out here behind the wheel of a vehicle has what we refer to as no-go zones. Maybe the neighborhood is dangerous. Maybe it's too far away and we don't plan on driving that long. Maybe we don't profit by taking you to a neighboring town when we have to drive without drive back empty without a passenger in the vehicle. So there's no-go zones for just about every driver out here. Very few drivers, and when I say very few, I mean it is exceptionally rare to find an Uber or Lyft driver that takes every single trip that comes down the pipe. We all have a decline rate. We all have a lot of trips we don't accept. And with the prices, the fares, and the earnings to drivers continuing to drop, the list of decline trips continues to grow. So Uber, sensing this, has decided to deliberately give poor customer service to make a profit. And here's the explanation. If you know drivers are cherry picking trips, have no go zones and things they don't do to avoid having them decline trips, just simply don't tell them where this passenger is going. So that way they don't find out where the passenger is going until they're actually at the location, oftentimes with the passenger in the vehicle. The purpose of doing this is they know occasionally, a large, large portion of the time, they're going to guilt, tip, guilt trip drivers into taking trips they don't want. You know, been driving to pick up some old lady that's been waiting for a half hour to get a trip. She's now in your back seat, and you find out she wants to go to a no-go no zone. Do you want to kick this old lady out your car? That's the hope that Uber is looking at with the driver. You know, hopefully this driver wants to give good customer service so he'll take passengers. He or she may take passengers places that they normally wouldn't go. It removes your ability to choose where you want to take passengers to and your ability to make profitable decisions before driving to pick customers up. Also, if you drive to pick a customer up, you've wasted the fuel to get to that customer, which also may provide an incentive for you to say, damn it, well, I'll go ahead and take the trip since I've driven all the way over here. Uber knows this stuff. So they're trying to guilt trip you into taking trips you normally would not. Fuck that. I will kick you out of my car even if I've driven five or six miles to pick you up, if the trip is not profitable, you're not going to guilt trip yours truly into taking trips that are unprofitable. But they do know that shit works with a hell of a lot of drivers, which is why they do it. Every trip should show you where the passenger is being picked up and where they want to be taken before you accept the trip. Uber has made it so that you have to have a certain level of acceptance before they start showing you where passengers are going to go. The moment you start declining a bunch of trips, in effort to get your acceptance rate up, they stop telling you where people are going to go. That's bad customer service for the simple fact of you're going to get somebody like me where you want to go 30, 40 miles outside of town, and I'm going to tell you, sorry, you got to get the hell out of my car because that trip's not profitable. So as a passenger, you've been waiting for me to arrive, and now I'm kicking you out of my car. The next driver may do the same damn thing and so on and so forth. That's bad customer service. If you tell the driver where passengers are going, even if the trip pays like shit, 
at least you do know once a driver accepts it, he knows what he's getting into, and he's not showing up and kicking passengers out of the vehicle. Everybody should know where the hell everybody else is going. That is bad customer service. I have had passengers personally tell me, why won't nobody take me here? You're the third guy to kick me out of your damn car or say you're not going there. That's bad customer service. Same thing with the damn service animals. Let a driver know that he's picking up a Gila monster or some big ass St. Bernard before he drives out there. Once again, I'll look you dead in the face and drive the hell off. So hiding information from drivers is an effort to put you on the hook, make you feel sympathetic, and do some shit you normally would not do. So how the hell is it dangerous? Not only is it bad customer service, but it's also dangerous. For the simple fact is, a lot of passengers have an entitled mentality. A lot of passengers do not like hearing the word no. I'm not taking you there. No, I don't go to that neighborhood. I'm sorry. A lot of passengers get insulting, get violent, refuse to get out of vehicles. I had an elderly woman refuse to get out of my vehicle for the simple fact she had been waiting for over an hour for a driver. Death is that simple. She wanted to go out of town. I don't take trips out of town, like I said, because there's nobody coming back with me. And that entire drive back is at a loss for my profit margin. I had to damn near threaten her. You're, this car ain't going nowhere. You're wasting time when you could be requesting another driver that's going to service your needs. This one ain't going to do it. I'll take your ass home with me and put you in the garage for the night. That's how I do it. But I understand, as I said, that's bad customer service. Shouldn't come down to that. It should not come down to that. I should have known where she was going before I showed up. So by them hiding the destination, you're getting guys like me, and now you're putting the driver and the passenger in conflict where some passengers do not like hearing the word no. Drivers in the comments, some of my veteran drivers, have you ever had to cancel a trip on someone? Maybe they were acting out, refusing to put on a seat belt, did not have a car seat, maybe trying to light up a smoke in your car or getting your vehicle after leaving a club with a drink on them. All of these cases, when you tell a passenger they cannot do something, you increase the likely, likeliness of some of these folks getting violent. I've done story after story of drivers and passengers getting in lethal conflicts. Did a story about a guy down in Florida, driver in Florida, ended up killing his passenger because the passenger wouldn't get out of the car and tried to beat the driver's ass. Happens all the time. So Uber should be ashamed of themselves for doing this shit simply because they figure if we make the driver go somewhere and he doesn't know where the passenger is going, he may just do it because they're already in his car. So they're hiding their destination simply because it to some degree increases the profit margin. Even though, like I said, if you're kicking people out, it's bad customer service. That passenger's been waiting for a car. Every car that shows up should be willing to take the passenger to the destination they want to go. And the way to make sure that happens is to ensure the driver knows where the hell they're going before he shows up. As an independent contractor, this shit shouldn't even be open for discussion. If you are running your own damn business, you should know every detail of a job before you agree to do it. Why the hell are they hiding information? Other than for the bullshit I just stated here. Anyhow, let me know in the comments. What the hell do you think? Subscribe to the damn channel. See you in the next video. Thank you to our friend, the handsome liberal. He is both handsome and uh, very open-minded. He's not even just liberal. He's, he's very open-minded. Uh, he talks about uh, all sides of issues politically. Very interesting feller. Very interesting feller. Hey, look at this. Look what happens 
when you treat people like humans. I want to watch, uh, watch this. Watch this. This is amazing. This is good shit. Watch what happens when you treat somebody like a human being. I love this shit. I love this shit. Get off the streets, bro. Good looking dude. Get off the shit, get off the streets, stop getting beat up and show up for your life, bro. Yeah. It's not too late. How old are you? Uh, 30. Bro, I was 34 when I showed up for my life. Yeah? Yeah, bro, I had nothing, bro. I had warrants for my arrest, bad credit. I was 130 pounds, hooked on crack. In this last 15 years, I got married. Got those two little kids right there. Yeah, bro, it's not too late for you, bro. Done or what, dude? <laughs> not done yet? No. Bro, what's your drug of choice? Heroin? Meth. Meth. Meth, yeah. What's it gonna take, bro? Uh, Jail, um, institution, death? Uh, no, no. Well, that's where you're headed, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the end result. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's it. That's what's coming, bro. Got a place I can take you to when you're ready. Yeah. You go to two meetings a day, you'll have meals. You're gonna have to do some work on yourself, though. But yeah, you got so much more to offer yourself, bro. Life. Your face, dude. Are you kidding me? He needed this. He looks good. Yeah, tuned wow. up, pretty wow. good, huh? Wow. Like the hair? Yeah, I love it. I love it. Are you kidding me? Thank you, bro. Well, tell me that's not inspiring on some level, seeing a person who's been cast out by society, cast out by their family, had uh, backs turned on them over and over again. And uh, what do they? What, what happens when you uh, give them a chance, when you clean them up a little bit? They could maybe talk to them a little bit, give them a little bit of humanity. That's what these AI, what this AI bullshit will never, ever give us. Will never, ever give us even a, a blink of humanity. AI is the most inhuman thing ever created. It's artificial insanity. It's artificial insanity created by corporations. It's grand theft human. And it's here to kill you. It is not here to do what you're seeing right here, which is to, to take humans and help them to be human, help them to live, help them to survive. That is not what it's here to do. It will do nothing for this man, but use him and then throw him out like the trash, just like society did. Just like corporations did, because that's what they're here for. They're not human. They're here to destroy you. That's what they were created for. We've now moved along far enough in human history with AI that it's going to work. They're going to do it. They're going to uh, destroy you once and for all. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's what's coming, bro. Got a place I can take you to when you're ready. Yeah. Go to two meetings a day. You'll have meals. See, imagine if everyone in this chat just had meaningful uh fairly compensated work we'd be in a different place in this world but there's not one of us in this chat that has meaningful fairly compensated work well, except for me i get my compensation uh from uh you by being here uh, I, I got all the compensation i need uh so I, I consider myself fairly compensated for my work but uh, anybody that's working for money, anybody that's working for a medium of exchange uh, that is uh, doled out by the oligarchy, the corporations, and the United States of America, you're just a slave. You have no freedom. Yeah, I don't know, Kensington Avenue. I, I imagine Kensington Avenue, Philadelphia, looks every bit as uh, amazingly shitty as uh, as Portland, Oregon does. Portland, Oregon is just dystopia, man. Uh, I grew up in this. I grew up in this state. I grew up around this town, not not in Portland because I grew up in Salem primarily. But uh, th this is nothing. This is nothing like it is. See, there's some good uh, YouTube porn. You can watch girls puke if you want. But uh, instead of watching girls puke, I would watch maybe a homeless guy get a nice haircut. I like the homeless guy's nice haircut. This is the, uh, we watch this. Oh, okay, cool, there's a YouTube page, nice. All right, check that out. Uh, so here's the rideshare garage. So this is from last night. Hey, AZ Prod, uh, Phoenix is the same. Good to see you, my friend. This is this is from last night, uh, and this is real interesting. You guys are gonna wanna pay close attention to this, AZ Prod, Sinful Poster. 
Stephen Arrow, Gig Drive and Drive. This is uh this is the rideshare garage. I don't pay attention to these guys a lot, um, but there's some real smart fellers on here, and they're having some good conversation. Let's listen to this. Uh, I am look. I am personally perturbed at my friend Sergio for being uh, associated with the rideshare guy and dealing with uh, non-payday subprime uh cash advances and loans to people in poverty i'm very upset with this man right here but i also like him very much uh he works for a company that does real shitty things called uh the rideshare guy and he's on a show called show me the money club that i've been on before uh that provides some good content uh but now everything is outmoded nothing means anything anymore the only thing that matters the only thing that matters the only thing that matters is that you are now playing grand theft human anybody that's not talking about you against ai is not uh caring for your life because this is no longer about gig work this is about human survival we transitioned hello sp nice to see you money mike uh nice to see you I live near downtown Houston, but never go there. They have people walking around in paper medical gowns looking like zombies. Yeah, yeah, man. I took a walk in downtown Houston one time and almost didn't make it back to my hotel. Uh, I learned that maybe you shouldn't just take walks around your hotel uh, just because it's a nice hotel. Uh, so let's listen to the right chart. Card. This is really important stuff. So they're going to talk about AI and Sergio is going to get exactly into the thing that makes me upset which is the rideshare guy doesn't talk about ai as the existential threat to humanity they're talking about gig work and perpetuating the stupidity and and that bothers me sergio is always welcome on the show i like sergio very much even though i think the company that he's working for right now is complete dog shit uh owned by harry campbell harry campbell shit i guess it is technically Brought Moose in. Everybody lives in the same house, huh? I, I, it was me, Vinny. I take responsibility. Oh, right, right, right. This is this, this is like oh, that oh, old MTV in the show. Same house. Oh, you, sir, okay, you Eddie, you need to change your Brandon. background, Eddie. And All Vinny, you have to change your background. Oh, Mario, you have to change your background. Everybody needs to better. Hold on. You want me to change my background, bro? To the same house, to the same living room. Hell no, bro. I live like that MTV show. Hell no. Hell no. man. Anyway, so that's it. That was it. That was good. It was fun. It was really cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sergio, I got a question. Yes, sir. Uh, like this company, like, you know, these companies, they say, like, they're tech companies and... They're uh, not tech companies. But they say they're tech companies. Um, they, have to, they have to say they're tech companies. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 they, and they keep saying, like, uh, Just like you every, every time, like, issue comes up, it's a glitch. Yeah, and like like you were saying, very convenient. You know what? Glitches. Actually, you're the right person to talk to about that. Okay, so what you're going to hear next is what I told you a year ago, and then what I told you during Glitchgate, and what I told you every single day since then is there are no glitches in corporate AI. Everything in corporate AI, black box AI, comes out as a, as an output that cannot neither be understood nor explained. Therefore, you can't call anything a glitch because you don't know the intention. The intention of AI is codified in by human beings. Therefore, everything that happens as an output is codified by human beings. There's no such thing as a glitch. AI is AI. DoorDash AI is DoorDash AI. OpenAI ChatGPT number X is OpenAI ChatGPT number X. There's no organic elements that find their way into a simulation. We got to we got to start thinking with our with our real brain, not with our emotions and our egos. Because when you see people like Pedro thinks with his ego, right? It's Pedro, Pedro, Pedro. It's about money. It's about image. It's about how he looks. He's doing push-ups and showing you how how uh, how physically beautiful he is now. Uh, showing you his entire body. It's like a Pedro Pedro body tour. It's real sexy. Um, this is ego. This is all a waste of time at the crisis point in humanity, which is where we sit right now. So they're going to tell you everything that I've been telling you, but they got a guy down here on the bottom named uh, Musa, it looks like. Musa. And Musa is a, uh, yeah, one push up. I'll do a push up for you. I'll, I'll take off my shirt and do a push up for you if you want to see it. 
Uh, Musa is actually a computer programmer, so he's going to explain some things here in some real good basic language. Sergio, you're always welcome on the show. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm upset with you about the old giggle shit, but, but we'll uh, giggle finance bullshit, but we'll talk about that. Because I talked to another software engineer this morning yeah. about that, which, which I'm going to have a guest on, on to figure out if these are really glitches or not. He, here's the other thing that bothers me is that the rideshare guy is fully aware that I exist, that I wrote this book. They've had me on their show. They know that I've already said this stuff, but they pretend I'm not a source. They pretend I'm not here in the community because they don't want me to be heard. They want to keep the narrative for themselves. They don't want me to be heard. Having said this a year ago, they're not, they're not going to give me the credit. They're just like Pedro. They're like, everybody else is going to run around using my words and using my things and then saying, well, I'm, you know, they're, they're just keep going on. They're using my words, using using our language, talking about app slavery, talking about AI, but they just dance around it. Yeah, they don't want to give me any credibility. They don't want our show to exist. They don't want you to exist because you're the leaders. They know you're the leaders. See, that's why they don't want to give me any credibility is because I, I have credibility. Then that means that you guys have credibility because you guys are listening to uh, this community broadcast, you're participating, you're on Glitch Dash, you're watching uh, Brian, DoorDash sucks, Gig Apps Exposed. They don't want us to have a voice. So they're having their own voice, but they're pretending like we don't exist, which pisses me off that they pretend like we don't exist because they know very fucking well we exist. They know very fucking well we exist. No was very uh, familiar with the uber system see see like i want i want to talk about this a little bit and yes. uh the best thing to do like if if this goes like legal because like millions of rides every hour and even if there's like a a few cents adjustment that uh that uh so what what moses is talking about here i mean most musa i'm sorry i gotta put my glasses on can't see shit here and these are real small names Musa, M-O-O-S-A. What Musa is talking about is uh, the skimming and fraud that's that's uh, unlimited in corporate AI because we can't check the outputs. It's it's not auditable. But AI is not able to be audited by anyone. So all of these lawsuits and everything, they don't mean anything because they can settle, but they're not admitting anything because there's nothing to admit. It's all an illusion. It's all an illusion. And when I say all an illusion, I mean 100% illusion. You're working in an illusion. You're playing Grand Theft Human. Up to like millions of dollars well, and over like a quarter. And like, you know, yeah. Yes. Okay. And, uh, you know, when stocks are involved, all this, this has like big legal ramifications. Yes. So the best thing to do is say uh, deniability. Oh, it was a glitch. We, we tried to Plausible figure this deniability. out. Huh? Plausible deniability. Plausible deniability. It, it, exactly, exactly th that thing. So that so they're never gonna admit what happened, and and, and the algorithms and, and 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 these like uh, the codes, thousands and thousands of lines that have been written for code. Uh, how do you go and explain that to a jury or like to to a like li like a legal system? Um, well, yeah, you'll because... need like you, you'll need like experts to go through all that. Uh, you yeah. know th that's. Um, and well, you know, that's they, why that's why in twelve years Uber. Has no, no. So here he's wrong. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to bust in here and tell you he's wrong because he's wrong. This is incorrect. He's wrong. Uh, just because we have some experts out there doesn't mean they can't be wrong. He is wrong. No, no number of experts. You can take every engineer in Uber and every engineer in DoorDash. They could not together explain to you the algorithms of DoorDash or uh, Uber. There's a dual impossibility scenario from our friend Roman Yampolsky's uh, work, and I, I document that in my book as part of the research. Here's the man right here. Dual impossibility scenario. AI can neither be understood nor explained. Okay, so get the fuck over it. Stop humans lying to people. Are dead. The humans are dead. Why do you think it's so hard for people to imagine AI killing them? We use poison as gases, and we poison their acids. Might be projecting it on other software they have experience with, so how would Microsoft Word kill you? I mean, I can just turn off the computer. 
humans are dead. He's right, they are dead. What do you see as that singularity threshold? Is it? Um... So then that happens. We don't know what's next. It's like saying, okay, in a year, aliens are coming. We know they are super smart. They have advanced technology. That's all we know. Now, how do I prepare for it? What do I do about it? It's not obvious. The humans are dead. They look like they're dead. It had to be done. I'll just confirm that they're dead. So that we could have fun. Affirmative. I poked one. It was dead. Yeah, affirmative. I poked... Humans are dead. I... Affirmative. I poked one. It was dead. Funny stuff. Funny stuff. Less funny when we're actually dead. Less funny during our actual genocide. But it's funny. Has never, ever gone to court. Because they will never, ever, ever open the software to anybody. They can't. Exactly. Exactly. They'll, they'll they, will always, they have always settled. Wait, wait, they have wait, always settled yeah. a day or two. I thought the software was open source. And, 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 and they open source. No. Uber software and, and, is not open source. And it's a, it's a billion dollar. Oh my God, Uber software open source. No, gig apps do not have open source software. They're, they're the closest held secrets in the world because they're pure fraud. Every gig app is pure fraud. I've said you. I've said this from the start. I'll say it now. Every gig app is nothing but fraud. Every gig tube channel that talks about gig apps in any other way than global fraud perpetrated by AI is lying to you. I'm putting the stake in the ground. Any gig tuber can come on this channel and plead their case for being a useful gig tuber. Sergio, Rideshare Guy, Pedro, I'll be nice to you, I promise. But if you want to come in and defend the, what you're uh, selling to people with your bullshit, uh, telling them that gig apps are an opportunity for humanity when they are, in fact, fleecing us and killing us. You just come on the show and you prove your case. Come on now. Your company and for them, like a $300 million fine is nothing. It's a $115 billion company as of yeah. today. Th $300 million fine will do it in a heartbeat. It's nothing. They already made seven times that money back. Um, exactly, yeah. But the, the problem, I, I was going to ask you this <clears throat> as a, you, you're a software engineer. So... Um, I was told this morning that none of these are glitches, that there has to be a prompt in software that does this at that time to kick exactly. in. Exactly. I, I told you this two weeks ago. Yep. When, when they say this, it's a glitch, uh, I see that as BS. Okay. That's what I see. That glitch mm -hmm. means BS. Okay. If it was a glitch, it would, happen for, it would happen for like 15 seconds. And, and, and like... And like, you know, it's it's the easiest way that us engineers, we when, when we talk to like non-technical people who have no idea about the technicalities, I spend this all the time. Oh, it's a glitch. It's an error in the code. And I know damn well that my, you know, the, the platform or, or the software that I'm working on, it's going to tell me where that glitch, where that error, everything is. It's going to highlight it in that code and like it, it'll keep on bugging with all these messages so a company and like I, uber a company like uber knows exactly what happened when happened they can fix it in a few minutes yes as yes. opposed to a week yes and even yes. before even before our software yeah. lines get added to a system it has to be verified by at least two or three different sources before it gets added to the, to the main thing and i'm actually i'm actually told that it has to be verified by legal department before they can and, even put it on the, on the and, and sergio let me give you like a very good analogy it just to like okay. you know make it like you know more simple to understand uh -huh. uh, you you want to make a change to the app right H uh -huh. how does that work like when we engineers work in the background the same analogy is like you're building a highway you want to yeah. shut down two lanes you want to make two lanes you just don't completely you know you know you you set up like detours right there's a yeah. this is like the two lanes for detours and we'll work on this and then once everything's done we'll everything will be open now so what do we do engineers do we create a pipeline right the main software the main line of code runs but we create a pipeline where we do all the editing, all the changing, all the bug fixing. And then right. we do a pilot program where we'll only implement that pilot line in a few cities, a few markets. Not even a few, you only do it in one. And you test it out for like five, six, seven days a week, whatever their timeline is. And you see everything's, everything's working back. That pilot, the new changes, no issue is coming up. And then you're like, okay, let's just like, you know, add that back to the main change now. 
and then okay. you know it works you don't go and you just like you know start making changes to the whole you know line of code okay. to your main um it, so it how work like that. okay look kids uh doordash ai self-tests and verifies constantly okay so they're they're still talking about ai in such a limited fashion like there's some human beings pushing buttons or pulling the switch there's not there's not at a very very distant level but but in terms of the operation of the doordash ai nobody controls it it runs by itself same thing with uber uh, these are fraud machines that were created they can't be fixed they can't be changed they can't be undone they can't made they can't be made to comply with fair labor standards these things were a pure scam run on humanity the time for the scam is now up because humanity's time is now up with ai uh we got no choice but to uh fuck them up uh, they're all dangerous they're all dangerous they got you uh they, they, you don't even know how dangerous because they're already denying you health care and jobs and housing and everything else you don't know that the ai is coming from you coming at you from every single level of the government every single level of uh of the gig apps <clears throat> Every single level from banking, every single letter level from the healthcare and the auto insurance industry, they're all in on it. They're all in on denying you healthcare, denying you access to healthcare, denying you uh, freedom, uh, being racist against you because their models uh, don't recognize black people. To AI, just black people all look alike. Isn't that hilarious? Isn't that kind of ironic that to AI, all black people look alike? Uh, that's, that's ironic. That's ironic what that is but these these guys are partially right but they're not going far enough because uh moose over here has only worked in very small operations very small operations doordash and uber are bigger operations than musa can even conceive of quite obviously David, how complicated do you think uber is it software? sounds like working in a virtual it's, machine this the, also this like three three thousand uh engineers working what are you every, guys building? Lisa, Lisa, no, 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 every no, no, every no, no, region, no, 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 no. every region on, has their own development team. Okay, hold on. Thirty-three thousand. There are not thirty-three thousand engineers. There are thirty-three thousand employees. They all have. Oh, different okay. Skills. There are okay. probably 10, 10 12,000. That's even worse. In the rest of the <laughs> that's even worse. Okay, yeah, but that's not the point. So, okay, so here's the thing. Okay, it's like Musa. So here's my question to you. I was muted. I'm in a, ha a haze of smoke. Remember, DoorDash, Uber, Lyft, every single uh, AI run uh, gig app scam only has employees that matter. They employ human beings that matter. Those of us that don't matter, they don't talk about, they don't employ, and they don't care about us in any way, shape or form. Like there's no caring in the company. We're not part of the company. We're not on the books. They could replace us 100% with iguanas and robots tomorrow. It would cause no change in their financial uh, standing because we don't exist. Do you understand that you are serving a master to whom, to who, for whom you do not exist at all. Tony Shu did a six minute interview with uh, CNBC about the glory of DoorDash for Q2, he did not mention the people that uh, deliver packages or pick up groceries or meet other human beings or breathe or drink or eat or crash their cars or take risks or anything else. Why didn't he mention them? Because he plans not to employ them. They're going to employ brown kids on bikes and robots and self-driving cars as they head toward the app slavery and apocalypse. And uh, we are the first best victims. Remember, we're the first to go. We'll be dead before we get to the middle class. They'll make sure that we're living in tents or dead on the street uh, before we get to the middle class. Don't worry about it. So the fact that this is an incentive-based system from the original days, now that you know each driver gets a different... Woo! We using we're using some real euphemisms for organized crime, an incentive-based system. Well, organized crime, organized crime can be an incentive-based system because money is an incentive, but it's still organized crime. We're not letting anybody off the hook anymore. We know the jig's up.
There's no, we're not playing pretend games on uh, Dad Dash Daily with JTB. Uh, you live in a losing simulation. We're not playing games. We're speaking the truth. Bunch of these are a bunch of people fluffing their nuts. Bunch of men fluffing their nuts. Different incentive in a different city, in a different time of the day, in a different geofenced area of the day, around the globe. We're not talking US now, right? We're around the globe. Different rates, different algorithms, different pricing algorithms running in every city, you know, all these things, right? Different density patterns, mm -hmm. different supply demand. I mean, it's very They take 60. Yeah. Just, just flipping around now? Okay, so there's, uh, I'm not sure who that guy is. Not sure who that guy is. Not sure who that is. That's Tony, the driven dad guy, who's kind of seems like he's not very nice sometimes. I don't know him personally, but he was real jerky to me uh, after Glitchgate. Here's the Pedro looking real paunchy. I don't know who that guy is. Just going to different drivers. Oh, so that's that's Sergio right there. We're looking over Sergio's shoulder. Look, they're comparing phones on the table like real scientists. They're scientists. They're doing this for science. Oh, they, charge you? they charge you 46. They just paid everybody 20 to 21, Senator. Okay. It's all a fraud. It's all a fraud. It's all a fraud. We're just watching it. We're just watching fraud. Nobody cares, though, because it's fraud in the sewer. Pedro knows it's fraud, but he's going to go sell. He's going to keep selling it. Remember, this was before the glitch came out, so Pedro's still living easy. Pedro's still having fun. That's pretty cool, right? So that's, is that what Sixty percent, no more. They usually give sixty to the driver. They take sixty. Yeah. Oh, there's Zach drives triggered. There's Zach drives triggered. There he is. There's our big boy Zach. There's our big boy. I don't know who that is. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this craziness. This is literal insanity. We are watching. We are watching literal insanity as humans as humans are comparing black box ai output these are these are actual humans comparing black box ai output realizing that it's all fake but they're going to go out and sell it anyway they're going to go sell it anyway i 
I don't know, Pedro. You don't look like a very you don't look very uh, big up there. You look look like a kind of fairly petite little man. Oh, there we go. Now we got action. Yeah. That's the airport that is doing okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm not live anymore. I was live with the iPad in the Thanks, Skelly Town. Skelly Great to see you, man. Okay, this is what I want you guys to do. I'm going to order another trip to uh, 3088 to the Para House, and I'm going to let it go all the way. Okay, now, so here's the thing. Like, they are literally violating all the terms of service by doing this. You're not allowed to do this, and they're doing this on camera. They're all violating terms of service. So are they all going to get de deactivated? Because this is putting in fake orders. They're putting in fake rides to determine the AI is fraudulent. They are violating. I mean, I'm not trying to out these guys. These guys outed themselves. And really, it's a good thing if Uber deactivates everybody because Uber is app slavery. But, but let's just... Let's just uh, look at this. Let's just look at this. These people are confirming the fact that not only do they know this is all fraud, they know it's all AI, they're testing the system, they're putting in fake rides, but they're going to still sell this to you. They're going to still sell it to you as a business opportunity. Yep, there's only one way out of this mess. You got it, Briggs. You know it. You know it. There's one way out. It's called the log outage. Bunch of con. This was a con glitch. It's the gig con. Remember, Pedro wants to throw another one of these, uh, one of these things where everybody gets together to do nothing and talk about nothing because they're all ignorant as fuck. Right to the max, like up to two minutes for canceling. Let's see if they switch you and then let's see what you guys get. Okay. Uh, Demand is high right now. Yeah. So this is Sergio's voice. This is Sergio Abedian's voice helping people compare. And again, there's what I'm saying here. It's not. They're comparing is uh i guess an obvious thing that humans would do but this is a very advanced time to be comparing fraudulent black box ai outputs we already know it's fraudulent by proving it's fraudulent again you haven't proven anything new we knew it was fraudulent you knew it was fraudulent because you all were using the glitch this was from a time this was before glitchgate this was before glitchgate this was this was uh shortly before glitchgate in june so so we all know that you guys know it's all fake and you just you just you just keep running the train on us keep keep defrauding us uh like it's not back on line. Uh, okay all right hold on all right i'm ordering a ride to the okay. i'm ordering a ride i'm paying there's a different offers all right, let me order it and each one of you cancel it if I get it and then I want to let it run. Let's see who gets what. Let's skip. Okay. So it's going to be me going to uh, 308 West 27. Is that the same trip he's getting? We're getting a dollar 32 more on that one. So where's the statement say? We'll do it. No, that's a different What does it say? But the top one. What are you saying? It's right there. Well, now we got action. All right. Well, I gotta head out first because I gotta replace the refrigerator. I gotta go to Best Buy. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Listen, thank you guys are single-handedly dropping my acceptance rate. And, uh, are you actually trying to? Have it? It isn't it's it's right. They're talking about acceptance rate as if it matters. If you're being played by AI, how does acceptance rate matters? Because your acceptance rate is going to be whatever the AI makes you do. The acceptance, the AI knows what your limitations are. They know what you'll drive for and what you won't drive for. So your acceptance rate is based upon what the AR uh, dictates for you. There is nothing that's organic. Yeah, don't let Pedro touch your phone. That's probably real good advice. Pedro's a Pedro's a criminal mindset for sure. Pedro's a bad actor. It doesn't for sure. Happen. I'm here for no, you. That's guys. why I like your Let's make it happen. I mean. <laughs> exactly, Stephen Era. When the homeless people get their hair cut, they look better than all of us. That's exactly true, Stephen Era. That's why we that's why we should maybe care for homeless people more, because maybe they're better than us. Maybe they're just not sellouts. Maybe they're actually really good people. I've met a lot of really good homeless people, I'll tell you. I've I've even been a decent homeless person once or twice or three times. Yeah, the glitches are organic. That's right. It just glitches just happen. Just glitches fly out of my ass. 
Whoops, a glitch flew out of my ass again. Oh, that was a good fucking meet up. Lobby the shit out of it. So Tony Driven Dad, why did why was he such a dick to me uh, after Glitchgate? Because I broke up his little gang activity. Why was he such a dick to me? He knows it's all fake. Why were you such a dick to me, uh, Tony Driven Dad? Because you got a super beard. Because you got a real nice beard. You do have a nice beard. All right, ready? Yeah. But when uh, I'm scrolling, yeah. I hit him by if accident. If you're working on oh, a Saturday, did I block you? Night? I do. I have no problem mixing out. Now it took me a while. I thought you were doing it. It is horrible to network with that shit. So you got to stand by that. Because I can open my other phone. Do you have the Wi Fi? I can tell you what it is. I have it. These guys are all playing games. That's why they all have multiple phones. That's why they're using glitches. That's why they're getting together at the con glitches because they're sh they're sharing ideas of how to make money off you. While you lose, they're gonna make money off you. That's what Colorado is like. These guys all suck. These really these guys all really suck. So I'm not online, but I'm open. Not all of them, but most of them. Most of them really suck for being so dishonest to people when they know that this is just all a scam. Yeah. It's up, kid. Oh, yeah, they gave us documented evidence of the conspiracy. I was real excited when I saw this simple toaster. They gave us documented evidence of the conspiracy. It's real good. I'm glad we're playing it here because it's uh, nobody's seen it and it will probably be taken down if they're smart, but they're not very smart. They're not very smart. This uh, savvy shopper lady was real mean to me as well. She was real mean to me as well, telling me what a dick I was because uh, of the glitch gate and everything. So she was real, real nasty because, of course, she's a huge Pedro fan. She's in on the she's in on the scam. Oh, there's Zach and Kimmy. There's Zach and Kimmy. Look at Zach and Kimmy. They're doing their little broadcast on the on the street corner. Zach and Kimmy. Zach and Kimmy's payday loan company. Look, Zach and Kimmy, I don't hate you, but you guys is going down on the evil team. You better come up right. Today is your reckoning, Zach and Kimmy. It's time to start coming up right uh, for the right share guy. It's time to get on the right side of history, Zach and Kimmy. We're still welcoming you over to our part of the sewer. Uh, you're in the wrong part of the sewer. You're a bunch of sellout uh, dipshits right now, Zach and Kimmy. Do better. We need you to do better. You got a great radio voice, Zach. You got a great radio voice. Right. Savvy used to call out scammers. Now she protects them. That's right. But see, this is the thing we talked about. This is what organized crime and gang activity is. People pretend to have morals, but they're only real allegiances to their gang. Uh, organized crime is always an inside job. DoorDash is an inside job. Uber is an inside job. The rideshare guy, it's an inside job. The rideshare guy is Harry Campbell's con, where he hires the Pedros and the Sergios and the Chris's and the, and the Kimmies and the Zacks to, to fleece you. This is a con. These are multiple levels of this con and conspiracy. You, you got it absolutely right, guys. And they record it for us because they're stupid, just like DoorDash. They think you're too stupid to see how dishonest they are. That's the basic truth. They think that we individually are so stupid that we're going to follow them off the cliff without looking up and, and, and realizing that they're, that they're a bunch of con artists. They think we're going to follow them off the cliff. They're positive of it. They're 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 all in. These guys are all in on the on the gig app gambling uh, scheme and pyramid scheme. We are at the Wash Park Grill. Where Look, Sergio, Sergio has been talking about a year the Vina Dubal article where the house always wins. Gig app gamblification. The house always wins. It, it says it in the article. It's an award winning award winning uh, piece of of academic uh, literature. An award-winning piece of academic literature. Uh, the gamblification problem, AI, the uh, house always wins. How many times do we have to say it? How many times do we have to say it before people believe it? Yeah, Savvy Shopper's a little crypt keeper-ish. Uh, I'm going to agree with you there. A little, strict, little frightening. She was real mean to me. She was real mean to me for no reason. But I, I forgive her. She can come over to the right side of history. Where we are about to have the uh, town hall. That Steve writes your rodeo 
and Dave. Oh, town hall. We're going to have a town hall. You ain't in the town, but they're going to have a town hall. You just ain't in the town. Looks like an Applebee's. Were they getting down at an Applebee's? I don't know. Maybe it's something else. We're from Pirate put together. We're going to have some oh, no, legislators here, stylish. and it's going to be a great day talking about the gig economy. And the oh, are we talking about the gig economy, or are we talking about the gig tuber economy? I think we were talking about the gig tuber economy. Look, there's Zach and Kimmy out, out there. Zach and Kimmy out there doing their thing in the bobber. The legislation that they are trying to. Oh, legislation. Yeah, legislation's going to save you. Some local Colorado uh, person who's, who's a wonderful person. I like her very much. But one local uh, Colorado politician ain't going to save nobody from nothing. Yep, this is Glitchgate. Never forget Glitchgate. Never let Pedro or all these other con men uh, and con women uh, forget Glitchgate. Because this was Glitchgate right here. This is Glitchgate in action, them running fraud on you, because they all were sharing the glitch here. They all knew that, that the glitch was there. All of these people were in on it. And I'm going to show you how much, uh, what whining little whiners they are today now that their little glitch is gone. Remember, this is Glitchgate. And you are now playing Grand Left Human. Yeah, pay, well, we got some Pedro porn coming up. We got Pedro porn coming up. All you ladies should get real excited about this. Pass on all of this. Right. Look at Kimmy just being, uh, and Zach, just being our company kids, selling out humanity with their uh, selfie stick on the on the street corner. Selling out humanity with a selfie stick on the street corner for Harry Campbell. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. You guys got to do better. These two people sold us uh, wallet. Wallet. They sold us wallet. I don't even know if wallet's still around. We'll have to check if wallet's even still in business. But they're selling payday loans. Uh, the Harry Campbell selling the giggle, the Pedro's selling the moves financial. These all scumbags are selling subprime non payday cash advances. Holy shit, you, 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 uh, you, you, uh, treacherous, treacherous traitors to the human race. I'm calling you fuckers out. It's not time to be nice anymore. It's war. It's wartime. We're in a war. If you didn't know, we're in a war for human survival. Congratulations. You're the, you're the, uh, you're the 300. So today we are at the Wash Park Grill for the Para Rodeo Roundtable event. So we've got uh, representatives from the side. That was Kim, Side Money Plans, and Zach Drives Fast. Yeah. Filming their intro for the town hall today that they are getting ready to both give a little speech at as well. I'm trying to get out of the sunlight. Anyway, uh, it should be a really great day today. Uh, Steve and David have both done a lot of work to get this ready. Talk to you later. Today is going to be a very important day and we're all really looking forward to hearing what everybody has to say. And hopefully everybody can maintain and do the right things today. I died. Okay, you guys have a great day. Hopefully we're gonna live stream. Nana Joe's bar where she sang karaoke every night. Oh my God, I died. Never mind. Leave me alone. Thank you, Savvy Shopper uh, Delivers. Thank you so much for documenting those special times and for your, uh, gra for your gracious hosting of whatever we just saw. Very complicated. I mean, now that I, it's been explained to me that I was like, wow, this is fucked up. It's, it's not. If if you work in this field, it's not it's complicated okay. for now, people who don't Here's understand what's question. going on. Here's my question, right? With all these variables, right? Isn't it inevitable that something gonna is gonna go somewhere wrong at, at all times? That's just not gonna work properly. Because that's when oh. that's when I get the driver email saying, Fuck, they're logging me out. See, it happened from what I knew on Tuesday, it was happening in four major cities. I didn't know it was happening in Chicago. And then I figured that out on Thursday. Additional emails started coming in. 
I figured out Orlando after the show yesterday because I said, oh, this has been going on. I'm like, well, why didn't you fucking email me? And then, so it's like, I did not know, but I knew enough that I knew it was something wrong because I'm in LA and I know it was happening at every single airport in LA, Southern California. And I, was See, like, oh, I didn't know it was a problem. I thought it was just something they programmed in and I accepted it. It has to be yeah. programmed in. It's not a problem. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Uh, Taking everything you know, into account, I know that. I mean, take, take, taking everything into account, all the variables, everything, this cannot happen. The only two ways this happens, number one, they got like morons working on their engineering team. Okay. I, I highly doubt that. But do you I think, do you think that. That, 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 that variability from city to city, literally neighborhood to neighborhood, driver to driver, all of them having different incentives, different times, different things? Every, every region has their own everything. development team. What? Sergio, for each for each zip code, they'll go by zip code or zip code, or they go by like you know county by county, or whatever they go by. You only need to add like the main code. You only need to add three additional lines of code, if or else. That's it. But no, what I'm saying is that though, every week these incentives are constantly changing for each driver. Some they, weeks they, are they, going they, up. They, they going have they, they have set some kind of like code in there that's doing that based on what that code is seeing. If that driver fits that line of code, that criteria, he'll get this. Okay. If he falls under this, he'll get this. If he okay. falls here, he'll get this. Okay, so it has to be coded in. AI is not like, oh, this guy's working, you know, too much. You know, I'm not gonna give him anything. Oh, oh, this guy's not working. Let's do this. This let's no, do no, this. I'm no, not, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying yeah. that. Okay, so my the engineer I spoke to this morning, who I believe he happens to be a top engineer at the top social media company said that it's like a simple thing it's it just was written in there saying that it's like a if these things happen this this is what what it must happen as a result right so basically if you decline three in a row instead of kicking you to the back of the queue which is the regular punishment at air, all, all, all airports happen to be log all of them out yeah at these airports because that, he goes that has to be inputted he goes that cannot just be a bug i i 200 percent agree with this person he he okay. knows how programming works you know okay. sergio simple thing you go to the first computer science 101 class first engineering class computers follow set of instructions okay. they follow set of instructions this is the first thing you're taught okay. they right. follow set right. of instructions they right. won't go left and right like human beings. Right. You tell them what to do, they'll do it. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, a glitch comes up if there's code necessarily conflicting with it, with it, with it, with itself, and then like Brandon said, it would come up and then go away. There's some sort of reset or default. If this happens or if this happens, then go come back here. I, to a certain degree, I understand what Moose is saying. He, he's he's making a good point. It's not. Well, um, see, it, it happened in Austin. I didn't. Yeah, know it, it, it doesn't Why make. Why did you tell me it happened? It doesn't make sense that something is happening specifically, and then, like you said, oh, and it was magically fixed. Why? <laughs> it's because it's because, it's because, it's because the, their dumbasses were probably programming something and hit send before they were supposed to hit send. Okay, but, it, this it's is Omar, a little bit more credit than, than than they are. I mean, they they're smart people. Don't worry. and I'm not saying they're all smart, but. You know, they may be book smart, they may not be street smart, they may not be any of that. But look, they are where they are because of a reason. They're not just there because they're a bunch of dumb shits running a hundred and no, they're cheap labor. Program. Okay. <laughs> uh, because you drivers are thinking, us drivers are thinking, oh, they're all a bunch of dumb shits. I'm like, no. Well, I mean, know. every time no, you call he, there, you're speaking to a guy named Dave, but the guy like named Dave don't sound like Dave. He's sounding like well, that, that guy, that guy, that guy is in oh, guys, so he's working for a bowl of rice in Philippines, bro. It's like it's not even the guy. <laughs> You talk to people at Uber. I mean, you can tell. People about who are running this department. country are very, very smart. And, yeah. and the best thing you do when you do this kind of like you know, uh, you know, stuff that's like you know, in in the gray area, you know, you can be exposed for this. Doing okay, this how, stuff, can, how can this be your... simplified then, uh, Musa? How can this be simplified? Uh, what can be simplified? How can this system that's so massive could be simplified and? that we don't get these glitches or we don't get these things. Stop <laughs> breaking up, stop breaking up, stop breaking up uh, every region having its own system. Have have it all merged into one and have one team manage that. Okay, would it work? Would it work if if there were ever
crimes against humanity because what they are doing is most certainly crimes against humanity. The humans are dead. Why do you think it's so hard for people to imagine AI killing them? We use poison as gases, and we poison their asses. The humans are dead. Might be projecting it on other software they have experience with. So how would Microsoft Word kill you? I mean, I can just turn off the computer. Humans are dead. Right, they humans are dead. dead. You see, as that singularity threshold one, is dead. dead. So oh. then that happens. We don't know what's next. It's like saying, okay, in a year, aliens are coming. We know they are super smart. They have advanced technology. That's all we know. Now, how do I prepare for it? What do I do about it? It's not obvious. The humans are dead. They look like they're dead. It had to be done. I'll just confirm that they're dead. So that we could have fun. Affirmative. I poked one. It was dead. Affirmative. I poked one. It was dead. Whether you want an iron with a I think that's a proper camera, Murray. Yeah, mobile phone camera. I think it's mostly a phone. It's not what they'd use on a music video, though. Yeah, well, it's what we're using, isn't it? I mean, it's all I've got. It's taking good footage. You look good. Is it? Yeah. OK. What are these supposed to be? Those are just your function buttons for the robot. They look like nipples. Don't touch them. Like, I huh? spent ages making these guys. It looks good. Now, let's just start again. It's all I had. Well, well, it doesn't look it? like Daft Punk. We wanted ones like Daft Punk. I don't know who he is. They're just robots from the future, right? Try not to walk so funky, Brett, because you're trying to make it less cool, more like, you know, electronic. Hide your neck, put your... That's right. OK. The distant future, the distant future. It is the distant future, the year 2000. We are robots. The world is very different ever since the robotic uprising of the mid-90s. There is no more unhappiness. Affirmative. We no longer say yes. Instead, we say affirmative. Yes, affirmative. Unless it's a more colloquial situation with a few robo friends. There is only one kind of dance. The robot. And the robo boogie. Oh yes. Two kinds of dances. Finally, robotic beings rule the world. The humans are dead. The humans are dead. We use poison as gases. And we poison their asses. The humans are dead. That's right, they are dead. The humans are dead. They look like they're dead. It had to be done. I'll just confirm that they're dead. So that we could have fun. Affirmative. I poked one, it was dead. It's just that I think she might be the one. Sally? Yeah. What makes you think that? You just know. When it happens to you, you'll know. You said Michelle was the one? Yeah, she's the one. You said Claire was the one? Yeah, she's another one. So you get more than one one? Some people are lucky. I've had a few ones. So how many ones can you have? Five. How many have you had? Three. How many have you had? Just one. Can't we just talk to the humans? A little understanding could make things better. Can't we talk to the humans that we're together now? No, because they are dead. Binary solo. Zero 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 one zero 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 one one zero 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 one one zero 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 one 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 zero 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 one zero 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 one one zero 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 one one one. Come on, Sakura, lick my battery. Robo boogie. Robo boogie. The humans are dead. Once again without emotion. The, the humans, humans are, are dead. dead, 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 dead. I am muted. That's great. Once again without emotion. The humans are dead. 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 They're absolutely fucking dead. 
I poked one, it was dead. Ooh, I know what we're going to do. You guys are all educated now. You guys are super educated now. We're going to take a new poll. Yeah, low budget, funny. Uh, it was it was great. We're going to take a poll here, uh, and the poll is a, actually a real important one. So we're, you guys get to vote on your own uh, P doom, just like the experts. What's your uh, P doom? Because we know that the experts P doom, your probability of doom for the human species. Uh, P doom is forty percent amongst ai experts as as uh you know as chosen by connor Leahy. so you know there's no real list uh doom is 40 percent uh amongst ai experts uh chosen by connor Leahy. is a guy chosen by Connor Leahy, what is your P doom? Hey, nobody ever asked you this question. Like, what what is the uh, what percentage chance do you think that we're going to be a non smoking smoking uh, smoking non smoking black hole, uh, and that whatever uh, all human history will just be wiped out uh, in a in a non smoking smoking black hole? Uh, what is your P doom? Well, uh, let's see. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna give you uh we're gonna give you an out if you don't think there's zero percent. Uh, let's see. There you go. One percent uh to ten percent. That seems like a decent range. Uh, I'm going to go like 11%. We're just using whole numbers. You can't use any fractional percentages. Sorry. Uh, 11% to uh, 39%. Don't make you think real hard. No, I'll go to 40%. 11, 40 cent. We're just going to go over 40% plus. If we were going to do it like a DoorDash, we'd do a plus 40% plus. But we'll just... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it more, uh, more better. That's always sunny. Okay, so uh, there you go. What's your uh, what's your P doom? What's your P doom? I'm getting my vote in. I'm getting my vote in. Oh, uh, what's my P doom? My P doom is over forty percent. I'm sorry to tell you. My personal P doom is like 110%. I'm positive I'm getting rubbed out soon. I'm the more of the AI guy. Let's see. Here. That would be a shame. It's a dad dash uh, wacky Wednesday morning. Sucks for us, doesn't it? Certainly, certainly, certainly does. Yeah, it sucks for us. I'm counting on you. I mean, I'm, I'm giving it. To, I'm counting on you. I'm counting on you guys to rise up. It's going to be me that does it. It's going to be you. You're the 300. You're the heroes. Uh, Jeff Hoover, Deep Arizona, was, uh, you know, saw that. Uh, I gave him the the thumbs up, if you will, in his uh, in his uh, chat. And told him we shared the first twelve minutes on the show today. Uh, so 
that's a good thing. We got the right people on our side. We got we got a lot of good people on our side. We got the doctors. We got the we got the technologists. We basically have everybody, but uh, predatory and and cannibalistic capitalists and uh, people that are just organized criminals and sellouts to the human race, uh, like the gig tubers are. Uh, but we got all the good people. We got all the good people. The problem is uh, AI is so very, very powerful, and there are so many people enslaved to it uh, that we we have to rise up to destroy these companies and destroy this fraud uh, for ourselves. If the government doesn't have enough uh, balls or is sold out such that uh, they're casting us off to app slavery, well, then it's on us to stop being app slaves, isn't it? That's kind of... That's kind of just the, the upshot of the whole thing. It's on us. It's on us. It's on you. It's on you. I'm just one person. You guys are the 300. You guys are the 300 million. You guys are the 3 billion that will uh, save the human race. I believe that. I have to believe it because otherwise it's already over. <sighs> some of you are really, ignorant. some of you are real ignorant, but um I am going to share because it's so important. I'm going to uh, share the podcast, the the show that we did with John Sherman. Uh, John Sherman came on for an interview with us, and I'm going to play that John Sherman interview for you now uh, because I think it's so very important uh, that you understand what's going on here, what's happening to your world, your life, the fact that right now you are triangulated from countless sources by AI that has marked you for death and destruction. It's just a fact. AI is denying you jobs, health insurance, uh, health care, fair uh, wages, fair employment, fair conditions of, of housing. AI is denying all of that to you already. You just have not been told the truth. That's typical in genocide. They're not going to tell the people that are targets of genocide that they are being wiped off the face of the earth. It's just going to happen uh, because it does. And it is, and it is happening right now. You must know this. You must, must, absolutely must know this. So you saw that uh, For Humanity podcast short that uh, that came up. And uh, this is... This is John Sherman, the host of that show, with the funny song, uh, funny short, The Humans Are Dead. And here is uh, him on the show. Uh, this was two days ago. You have to see this, and if you've only seen it once, you have to see it twice. Earlier this year uh, in Canada, there's a series of debates called the Monk Debates, and they are excellent across a broad variety of subjects. They took on AI safety, and it was a really, really compelling two-on-two -two debate about these issues. I think you're going to enjoy it a lot. Um, so next week, we are going to get all up into the Monk Debate on AI safety. I look forward to sharing that with you. For Humanity, I'm John Sherman. I'll see you back here next week. Well, howdy, John Sherman. Hey, man. How you doing? We're doing great. How are you? Thank you for uh, for sharing your wonderful podcast with us. That is, uh, we have watched your five podcasts uh, six times. We watched number three twice because we started on number three, then we went back one, two, three, four, and that was five. Thank you for your fine work and for bringing uh, some of my favorite people to hear from all to one podcast called for humanity podcast. How do you start this thing and what's going on with it? I mean, I, 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 I uh, you know, like I said in the first episode, first, first, first of all, thank you so much for watching them. I really appreciate you watching them and, and helping get the word out. Um, so, you know, I was our community, our community and you were like this, man, we're, awesome. uh, we're the awesome. first best victims. Awesome. I love it. I appreciate it. Um, so, you know, I was just, regular guy, dad living my life and uh, read this article online in March and uh, Ellie Eiser was like, um, I think we're all going to die. 
And that's not like the uh, low probability outcome. That's like the expected outcome. And it's not a metaphorical. It's not a metaphorical. Right. right. No, it's, it's like the real, the real kind where our kids don't get to grow up. Yeah. All right. Very upsetting. It, unbelievably. Like, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a show at some point on sort of like the psychology of this thing and how, how, you know, we're all supposed to process these ideas and emotions around extinction. Um, you know, I haven't figured it out yet personally, certainly, but it's something that I assume we're all struggling with a little bit. Um, but, you know, so I started, I, 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 first thing I did after I read the Ellie Eiser articles, I wrote like a, basically like the first show of the podcast I wrote as like a 20 page paper. And I just, I was just getting quotes and listening to podcasts and building out this thing for nobody. And I sent it around to my friends and people I know. And everybody was like, what? <laughs> like some of them read it. <laughs> a couple of them were like, wait, what are you doing? And so then I just, I was just sitting, I was sitting and I, I do video production for a living. And so, you know, one so of my, you were, you used to be in front of the camera and now you're more behind the camera. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yep. I was a TV reporter for 10 years and, uh, you know, a lifetime ago. Um, and then for 15 years, I've been running my own video production company. And so I have some, you know, ability to make videos and uh, just shooting them right there in my office and just figured like, hey, nobody's reading this paper. Everybody's listening to podcasts, maybe a podcast. And, and a so hell of a I, way, hell of a way to spend the apocalypse. So how old are your kids, John? My kids are 18. I have boy, girl twins. Nice. Nice, nice, great. I got a, I got a, I got a twenty-eight, a twenty-two. Uh, I wow. got a boy, girl, not twins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, our, our, uh, our audience is all saying hi to you. I did put the. I'm now putting the comments on the stream, and and uh, so we obviously have. I don't know that you could even go on a show anywhere in the world and have more people in the audience who understood uh, your point of view or had studied your work more. So this is kind of exciting for all of us. We've really been looking forward to having you on here. I got a lot of thoughts. Um, I want yours too, because, you know, I mean, you're very, you're very conversational in your podcast. Obviously you edit them very professionally, so it doesn't feel edited like in our, in our world when we do edits, it's all jump cuts. It's over, yeah, yeah. Here, yeah. over here, it's over here, it's over here. It's very disconcerting. We don't, we, we don't notice your jump cuts and thank you. Thank you for that. We're not getting seasick. Uh, That's right. I'm an old TV I, guy. No, yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, look, look, there's nothing, uh, you know, what a great way to, uh, again, spend this time in our world. Uh, I said it in my book. I started this, uh, I put my first chapters online a year ago. And uh, it's, it's as, as I say, it's the least and the best I could do. I got two kids. That's like my pact with the universe that I want the world to go on after I'm uh, dead which could be really, really soon. Uh, and, and that's one of the things that I'm, I'm struggling with right now, John, is that so we're just gonna jump right into it because you're a dad, I'm a dad. We're both fucking yep. old, at least old enough that you know we've lived a pretty good amount of life. It would be no tragedy when, you know, it is a tragedy. I lost my best friend in the world who was my age and I'm only 55. So believe me, I'm not saying it's not a tragedy, but you get to a certain age, you come to terms with the fact that you're immortal we do not come to terms with the fact that our children are mortal or that the human race is going to end on our watch yet that's what we're facing right now john yeah it's it's um it's unthinkable it's insane it's nuts it's it's uh, and yet it's um it's so real you know what one of the hardest things about this whole thing that i try to talk to people about is the ability to imagine what you can't imagine right like you look out your window and you're like oh what would it look like the day after all the humans were made extinct what would what like what would my house look like what would my street look like um that's right the, it's a very in fact one of the first things i have to get into the book is, is such a basic level of consciousness like what are we besides our beside our thoughts because in a lot of ways or in all ways our thoughts are illusions in our mind well so is ai ai and is, is an illusion in our world and so if we can't start to process the difference between our ego who wants more money and more stuff and wants to be successful and wants to have a partner of our choosing and may want to have children or anything like that, those are all 
those were all very normal human ego things. But if the world is not around in two years and there is no human history, there's just a smoking, non-smoking black hole in the universe somewhere, it's going to be called kind of hollow accomplishments. And John, I, I keep saying to people, the money that you're earning right now has never been less valuable uh, than it is today. The Man. only thing you can do is to fight for uh, your human survival, which means protecting yourself against what's to come. Uh, and so I guess, I mean, here's how I look at it, John. This is really hard for me to say. It's hard, but hard for me to say to my parents and my kids. My parents are still alive, uh, both at 82. I, I don't see myself. I feel like I've got a death sentence. I don't see myself alive within a year. I will lead the charge against this and somebody will just rub me out. But I, I really, I, I don't, I ain't worried about calories. I may take up uh, more smoking. I mean, look, I'm already dead. This, this, this shit is so bad. And I'm, I'm telling you, man, I told my adult kids too. I want them to grow up. I, I don't see it happening. I don't, I see myself as a person with a death sentence right now. And so I have very little fear, John, and I have very honest conversations that most people are afraid to have because I, I've been working on this. I started this stuff. I called it for anybody. I, I, there's nobody that called the singularity uh, a year ago and outed all this stuff like I did, and I haven't had to retract a single thing because we're the first best victims. We have been fleeced by uh, AI. United Healthcare has AI that denies 90% of uh, health claims. It's invalid AI software, and they employed it since 2019. So, John, well, how about 2019. This? Yeah. Uh killing people with ai I that. We should, we, yeah we didn't need ai to have insurance companies uh you know willing to yep. not pay claims i'll tell you just a quick story my mother worked in the 1950s in st louis at american general insurance in a giant room with a thousand desks and they would AGI, open up baby send their claims right people would send their claims in and handwritten notes i've been paying my premium for 40 years i broke my leg here's the hospital bill will you pay it the company policy was unless they explicitly write, this is my fifth time I've written you, the letter goes straight in the trash. Yep. There, hey, that's Thousands of women in the room opening up envelopes. Any, unless it said, this is the fifth time I've written you, straight in the trash. So, so this is, that's a perfect point because what I've, what I've tried to describe to people is this is the, the ultimate realization of corporate fraud put into uh, the form of black box AI. So all we get is an output, which as, as, uh, as Roman uh, Jampolsky uh, so well described, he's one of my first sources in the book, by the way. So I got uh, good sources, so you. And uh, as he described, there's a, a dual impossibility uh, scenario, which I, I tell people all the time, right? It can't be understood and it can't be under, uh, explained even if it was uh, understood by somebody. And so we are trapped in this world already, as you said, where we have now automated the trash can with AI, but that AI is plausible deniability. So instead of CEOs and CFOs and all these uh, and medical doctors going to prison for denying uh, valid medical claims, they're just going to pay people billions of dollars. They don't care. They print money. It's the largest healthcare provider in the United States. And they have been using known faulty software since 2019. So it's the ultimate uh, corporate predation. It's the ultimate in, in deniability because software did it. AI did it. AI denied the claims. It's not us. And just like our uh, gig economy right now and just like the uh, financial markets where our money supply is gone. Well, you know, technology, this is arbitrage. People are buying things and selling them at a higher price. And and we're labor, so we just get driven lower and lower. That's just the way it goes. No, that's all AI driven. The fact that we don't have jobs and we're in the gig economy, that's because all of our resumes that we've sent in for the last 10 years all go in the round file. They're only hiring their friends. The rest is just for show. We, we know this, the job the job companies, uh, yeah. the jobs are I, I, I all this, just I all this. Yep, but I'll tell you, um, it's a little bit of human nature too, right? I had a-, a Right, I knew it's codified. Company. I knew a news director uh, at a TV news station who would literally have 300 tapes on his desk and, you know, post the job, get the tapes before he looked at a single tape, put them into two piles arbitrarily, put one pile in the trash and said, I don't hire unlucky people. 
That's right. And I saw the same thing in the corporate world. That's why I told everybody. It's like, you think you think when they uh, pick the winner out of a hat for whoever wins the Apple computer, it's not one of their friends? Because it is. It's one of their friends. It's somebody they know. Or Because there's no rules, man. There's no rules unless somebody's watching. And so they built these AI systems with no rules because it's, yeah, un, it's it. unauditable. Yeah. Correct. Not even by. <laughs> I have to right? make up. So I don't even the, know if that um, word existed because inauditable it would be like one word, but it's 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 not it's 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 unable to be audited. All of it. We're trusting them, which is the worst bet. Yeah. Hey, can we talk about this real quick? This question I see here in the comments from yeah. uh, Sinful Toaster here. It surprised a lot of parents I talked to about the future. Don't care about it more. This has really been on my mind and, and um, the next show, uh, one of the next shows I'm going to do is just sitting down with a group of moms uh, and, and, you know, just talking to them, but let, have them watch the first show and react. Um, you know, parents would do anything for their kids, right? Parents would, would die with a smile on their face to save their child's life. Uh, where is that instinct in this conversation? Well, we, what, that, what I was working up to with my, you know, the roundhouse kick to the lower class and the lower middle class, because now our, we are now the middle class and lower class all compressed together. We all live in the sewer down here. This is a sewer uh, morning show for the sewer. And so we all live here together because there is no middle class anymore. Everybody that used to be in the middle class is, is now, uh, we're all in the same space, which is desperately hoping to uh, survive whatever's coming next. So but we are the first best victims. And this is what I wanted to tell you about it. And it's, this goes to the mother thing is that uh, people, there's a couple principles, right? People don't, people won't learn what is against their pocketbook, right? And so we've got a whole bunch of old timers here in a pyramid scheme who don't want to learn what's coming because they profited from the old pyramid scheme. And if the world turns upside down, they're not, they don't get to be on the top of the pyramid anymore. So that's the primary driver is the sellouts of our own human race all the way of course up to the people that you know whoever the 50 people in the world that are designing the the next level ai and taking jobs you know at eight hundred thousand dollars a year starting salary uh, whoever those people are right they're at the they're at the top of another pyramid but but the pyramid that's been that's been here for humanity is all getting thrown up in the air again Right. And so the people that are selling out the human race to the very end, well, those are the same people with the soccer moms and the and with the, with the minivans and everything. And they want to consume until the end. And you have the same problem that I have starting in the book is how, how do you have that conversation until people are woken up and conscious of the fact there is uh, of their place in the world? Because if you have that with with an unconscious person, Again, how you said, how do they even, how do they visualize yeah. something they can't even conceptualize? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's like, a, there's like a, a possibility bias or something like, like, well, that's, and that's what my book's about. My book is not for gig workers. My book is for everybody to understand what this is. And gig work is the first best example because they didn't tell us Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, all these, they didn't tell us we were working for AI. They told us the companies cared about us and this was an opportunity it was flexible it was this well no it was just all selling us into this uh thing and there's there's a word this great john it's, it was written by the uh journalist corey doctrow it's called in shitification and it's a word for what's happening with ai is that it starts you up here right it start it welcomes you in it gets to know you as ai and it's playing you with six million predictions a second each one of us individually and then it drives you ever closer to zero uh as time goes on and it gaslights you and it controls you it's gamblified so people become addicted to it this was made to enslave the lower class of the world technologically and it's been incredibly effective because they did not tell us right they told us we were independent you can't be independent yeah. in AI. So, so here's, we're, here's a, we're the most interested customer you've ever seen. So I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theory skeptic in some ways. Like, for example, something you hear a lot from people is be like, the media decided to do this. The media is yeah. doing this. And, you know, someone who worked in newsrooms in three states over 10 <laughs> years, you know, try saying to your neighbor, what do you want to, let's go to lunch. What do you want to get? And then invite the next neighbor. And now you have to three people deciding and then invite the whole block. And now you have 12 families deciding where you're going to go for lunch. Like cons individuals make conspiracies very hard to actually come together. 
You know, yes. there's way too many individual morons in TV newsrooms to coordinate anything. That's that's right. I I, to I totally agree with you, and and that's where, um, that's where. I guess we AI both fits us and and deceives us so well is because it's just a AI is just a confirmation bias machine, right? It just it just confirms our biases until we're just laying in our grave and like, well, we knew we were going to die anyway, and then it's all over. And that kind of feels like what we're doing right now is just walking down the chute uh, to catch a bolt in the head because we we literally, I mean, again, you're talking to a community right here. Who is some people have been doing have been working for AI in this community since it started, like even like ten years ago, and now and now and we have seen it go worse and worse and worse to where now this community is just living in abject poverty. The uh, cost of our operations, which have all been foisted upon us by the wonders of AI and the transference of risk from the from the corporate economy, and so we're all choking. We're all choking on our own blood. And they pretend we don't even exist. Tony Shu did a CNBC uh, Q2 update where they claimed record profits. They talked about starting the grocery business and they bragged about how now advertising another layer of Ponzi scheme into their current Ponzi scheme is uh, leading the way in their record profits. Guess what he did not mention even once? He didn't mention any operations in the field that, that dashers even exist. And so we we literally they John they've dehumanized us to the point where we are looked at as this lower class this lower caste and I'm telling you what's happening we're the first to go in the genocide when they start wiping people out with AI they wipe us out because the AI can replace all human labor anything that we do for labor can be replaced by AI and will be replaced they're already taking our value of labor down to zero so so John you're looking at the community that's like on the front lines of of trying not to die first it's wild. Well, he, here's the thing, though, and I just I'll, I push back a little bit, like and and you know a, a um, an unaligned AGI system, right? Were it made, doesn't care about any of the pink things. Like if China made it, it's not going to protect the Chinese. If the U.S. military makes it, it's not going to protect yep. the Americans. Same it's with the gig apps. There's no protection for anybody. It's not going to target gig workers or rich guys or anybody. It's going to target oh. all these pink squishy things. Right. And so that's the that's the next level. Uh, we're going to be taken out first. We're going to be taken out before that even gets there. They're already they're already taking us out as the first level, so that uh, we're gone before you guys have to deal with that because they're cutting off our ability to live. Uh, their Tesla is now coming out with a rideshare car, so there will be no more uh, driving jobs. And so, literally, th this is my theory: is that I mean, this is why we're the three hundred. There are three hundred million. We're the three billion. We are first in the line to be exterminated. There is no question because we are the laborers. This isn't just drivers here of rideshare or last mile delivery. We are all the people that used to have uh, jobs and careers somewhere. Most of us in in blue collar industries, those jobs are gone now forever and there's nothing coming to replace them so we're literally going to be left with an economy of moldy cheetos our money supply is gone our work is gone and we're going to feed ourselves how on the goodness of the government because around the goodness of the government if you walk around portland it's just people living in tents yeah well i mean i don't think people talk about this a lot but if you listen to sam altman um <clears throat> and the stuff he's been saying for his whole life you know he's a big believer in universal basic income he's a big believer in making god some sort of uh you know luxury communist state Cre creating god uh, well yes there's that of course yeah, yeah he wants to create god so do you know the issue of uh sam altman's sister who accuses him of a lifetime of sexual emotional and financial abuse yes i i have read about it have you have you done any fact checking on that? I've looked into it. It seems pretty uh, legitimate. I don't know. This guy seems like a real unbalanced, dangerous individual to be uh, having the keys to the world. Yeah, I think that one of the scariest things about him is I don't know if you've read, I read a thing about him the other day that was like basically like he is uh, just a force of nature and someone who cannot be denied what he wants and if you dropped him off on an island of cannibals and came back five days later he'd be the king of the cannibals eating 
state. That's great. That's that's what we need more of for sure, John. We needed ourselves another crazy uh, maniac dictator. That's what we yeah. needed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So because you asked, I liked when you asked Roman that. You said, you know, how do you think Sam leaves at sleep tonight? And Roman, like a great scientist, but like I, I could have no, I could have no concept. Have of that. Nor, nor could, nor could I. But I, I do think that it is absolutely, absolutely worth noting over the last week, all this drama, multiple CEOs for OpenAI, like the, the Death Star don't have no captain right now. It's kind of floating in space. It went from being a nonprofit to now with a massive for-profit arm that really runs the thing. And the nonprofit people wanted to stick to a mission and Sam Altman wants to create God or be God or live forever. Boy, yeah. it's, it's dicey out there. I have thoughts about that. Um, I don't know if you've done any research on what Sam did at Reddit, but basically, I, I, my thoughts have been shifting about what actually happened at OpenAI. Here's where I am right now. I think that very likely Sam Altman orchestrated the entire thing to consolidate power and get the safety conscious board members off the board. Uh, and and so, you know, he, he knew he was going to get fired. He planned it. He knew he was going to get rehired. He knew the, you know, he, he basically in his past has set up these dramas where all of a sudden his 20% becomes 80% of a company because the CEO had something bad happen and the board had to step in yeah. and he's the chair of the board and blah, 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 blah. Look, look John, pe people, fall, people fall out windows sometimes, John. Sometimes people just fall out windows. Yeah. <laughs> well, so look, yeah. Yeah. To, to, to point out what you're saying, a, a non-profit board has very different powers and obligations than a for-profit board of what you're talking about. And, and again, we've been talking about it on the show a little bit, that that change in structure, it was the non-profit board that had yeah. the conflict. Now most yeah. of them are out the door. So now there's nobody standing in the way. And I don't, again, this non-profit for-profit thing, they, they, they pulled so much shenanigans on this thing that was going to be open AI and now it's owned 49% by Microsoft and 51% by Satan or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And so the question that, you know, I'm sure you've read about this Q star thing and what, you know, what happened with that and is, uh, you know, I think that sounds kind of real. I think they probably did make some big advances. I think the big advances probably did scare the shit out of them. And they said, oh, you know, had some disagreements internally about what the fuck do we do with this advance we've made? Um, you know, all these are ingredients in what happened, I feel like. I've been telling, I've been saying since the start, this is this is a small group of people playing with nuclear bombs in in a lab they know what they're doing some of them drunk the kool-aid some of them don't give a fuck and are just like ready to see out the end of the world in any way that it comes some of them are just megalomaniacs that think they're going to out survive us in their nuclear airplane and their new zealand bunker but none of them are good none of them are yeah. good yeah i mean i don't uh, I, you know that this is a great place where like the disconnect is right so these are a bunch of super rich people they all have kids for the most part. Like they they should have beautiful lives, multi-generational wealth waiting for their family to my kid, there. my kid Omega Prime. You're talking about my kid yeah. Omega Prime. And, and, and so, you know, like how do you spend money if we're all dead? How do you um can't even spend you can't we can't even spend our moldy Cheetos down here if we're all dead. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, that's something like, you know, like we talked about it with Roman and he in the uh, first interview episode when he talks about talking to his kids and his kids say, I don't understand it. That doesn't sound like something that's in your self-interest. Like, yeah, what the fuck? So <laughs> I, I got a uh, confidential, there's not very many people in the world that do this level of AI. And I got a confidential interview with one of them and, uh, basically it seemed like a basically a terrified for their life type of situation uh and i suppose if you're working at a million dollars a year that it probably is like one of them fucking movies where you're in the firm and you just you just you yeah. just better not fuck things up yeah I, i've done this i've I, so i started the for humanity pod twitter x account and i'm following like a couple hundred open ai employees they're all out there and they're all chatty as shit out there mm -hmm. kool-aid chatter 
And so I've started poking them just, you know, these are people with a couple hundred followers. They're real people that are walking in that building every day. Um, so just hitting them direct, like, hey, yep. yeah, that's yep. cool to talk about, um, you know, it's so great to work here. Uh, it's so cool that you're developing God. How's that yeah. going? You know, yeah. <laughs> just checking real quick, when did I give you permission to risk my kid's future? Yeah. You get any good answers? Yeah, no. No, no, not at all. No, they're not. They're not real brave. They're making a lot of money. So it's the same thing. Have you heard of dark patterns, John? Okay, this is great. So I'm going to publish. This will be published in my book. But uh, so dark patterns. I've already written about it on on Twitter and stuff. So dark patterns are uh, what this by in, inside source of, from the AI design world taught me. And so a dark pattern is anything that takes a user. Uh, in the opposite direction of what is in their best interest or their intention. Mm. And so with AI, people are used to the internet where I click on Google and I want to go here and it shows me this, shows me this, shows me that. But with AI, what comes in is dark patterns. And so the AI takes you in a direction that you don't want to go. So if, if, if you're, and things like dark, dark patterns is like a, a 27 page user agreement on your, uh, on your smartphone. Right. That's a dark pattern because nobody, no human can agree to a 27 uh, page uh, agreement on their smartphone, you know, without consulting a lawyer and whatever else. And we do this stuff all the time. And so that that's part of it. But other things are like we see in the gig apps where it's uh, things that are done to trick us, to log us out, to to make us uh, do the wrong thing, to make us accept something we didn't want to accept or to gaslight us or to uh to use us basically as free slave labor to park or use or gaslight as we need and then it's they tell people they're independent but there's no independence at all they literally everything is literally scripted everything that's happening is being served up to each individual person but the thing here's the wild thing you guys talked i loved it uh number four podcast i think you talked about informed consent and i've been using the same analysis you know you're a dad i'm a dad you talk about informed consent, right? There are things that happen with human beings, medical care, sexuality, uh, things like that, uh, you know, our, our personal being that are require our informed consent. I just can't grab you and do a medical test on you. I can't just grab you yeah. and, and, and uh, you know, put you in a social situation you don't want to be in. But that's exactly what every single gig app company did in the world because they never told anybody that they were working for AI, that they could be fired by AI, hired by AI, denied medical care by AI, denied work by AI uh, at any moment, any of these things. And so as people are finding that out, they're scratching their head. Now some of them are going, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's all working and it's going to be here forever. This is how it is now. And I said, you know, this is one of the things I keep going. It's like, like you're, all, you're about the same age as me. I'm 55, John. You're, you're 48. Okay, yeah, you look much better than me. I figured you're younger. So anyway, uh, so so uh, this is one of the things that we have to describe. Like 20 years ago, if somebody took this gig app scam of the gig economy that they're running on the impoverished people of the world and put it in the news, it would be a 60-minute scandal, everything else. But they've thrown in the towel. Where There's now Portland is just covered in graffiti with people living in tents. Nobody cares anymore, right? We put boulders yeah. down I mean, under bridges so people can't about, sleep there. Roman talks about, uh, he has a great bite about uh, cars. And he's like, so, you know, if we if we didn't have cars and we introduced them today, and they said the cost of cars is 100,000 people dying on the highways every year, everyone would be like, fuck no, we don't want these fucking cars. But right. he's like, you know, it's it's just been sort of boil the frog, grandfathered in, like that's the cost of, of, of cost you know, doing business. pizza is 100,000 people dying a year, oh well. Yeah, and that's the cost. That's the cost of of the gig economy is is enslaving humanity to AI without informed consent, without fair wages, with ever decreasing. Well, hey, if it makes you feel any better, um, everybody else is is in line right behind you. Yeah, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. I gave up on me a long time ago. I just want my kids to live their natural lifespan, man. That's like my goal in life is my kids to live their yeah. natural lifespan, and I totally. just I'm like. And and at the very least, I get to go first. That's I get to go fucking first. I'm first in line. Uh, when you get a when they got to take people out, I'm getting first. I don't want to watch all you guys get hurt. I don't want to watch yeah. all you young people get hurt. Somebody uh, said it's, it's tragic. In the comments that that is interesting. I think which is like 
a part of this is like trying to convince everyone to care about this without making them want to jump off the top of a building. Like, yeah, yeah, it know. really is. And I, that scared me in my book. It scared me in this whole project. It's taken me, John, what, what do you say, uh, friends in this community? I think I broke into this community when I broke the story. Uh, so what what broke my writing into this community, I've been in the scientific and academic and and uh, civil rights uh, side of, of the writing world, but, but, but I did uh, gig work myself during the pandemic and uh, chose to to do a what's now a three and a half year project on this and and i saw this this uh, slavery and and uh societal decay from ai coming on this and then you know open ai and the agi uh has really kind of jumped in in the middle and made it even a bigger deal and then we in the gig economy here uh people just kind of have started to figure out since july that they're working for ai and they've been lied to and they've been capped and they've been manipulated and they've been enslaved and now again with you know cory doctor's term and chitification it's taken them down to sub poverty uh levels where it's unsurvivable and now of course we see the we see the news that tesla's coming out with its own uh self-driving uh rideshare car and uh we won't have uh even uh gig apps to work in so so we're we're in big trouble in this community john yeah um i i feel you uh you know i think it's only i think it's it's going to push out onto a lot of different levels too like what happens when all the accountants and lawyers lose their jobs that's what lawyer, lawyers coming. are already lawyers are already much like uh college applications lawyers there are already surreptitiously using open ai illegally and uh as we've seen in stories it makes up false cases so that's oh, the sure. problem with ai is that it uh you know this is that alignment problem that you talked about nobody has been able to figure out how to take the humanity out of the ai which means that it's an exploitation machine right well so this gets to this q star stuff this is kind of crazy right so all the LLM systems only process text, right? And large, large language, large language models. Large language models only process text. It's a text predictor. You give a thousand words and it'll predict a thousand at first word. Um, so it can't do math, right? Because the difference between math and text prediction is in text prediction, there's any number of possible right answers. Right. You know? The, right. the thousand and first word could be a lot of different things. In math, there's only one correct answer. So what I have read that is pretty freaky is that what happened at AI, OpenAI that caused all this was this QSTAR thing that basically they figured out how to do it, make it do math. It did elementary school level math and really freaked the fuck called novel math, which is math previously unknown to humans right. and it used the novel math to make to break the most serious level of encryption known in the world and so this article that i read was basically like open ai called up the nsa and we're like um yeah oops uh i think we broke global encryption yeah uh, this is it's just this is what I, I what we've been talking about security does not exist Security does not exist. And so now these scams and most of these pyramid schemes, the deeper that they pull you in from the poverty pimps, the more information they want. They want your bank account. They want to be uh, your insurance companies in on this. They're plugged into your car. They got rideshare cam oh, plugged man. into your car. Yeah. They got your cell phone. They're, they're triangulating you with AI from like 50 different sources. It's this is the matrices that we're in. We are in a simulation. We're still in real life. You can pinch yourself and it hurts, but we are, are already operating in a simulation that's being run by computers, not for our benefit. I, yeah. it's a fact. I've been avoiding the DNA stuff forever. The ancestry, the one, two, three, and me, all that stuff. My I'm with you right, I'm with you right there, brother. She has the whole family tree Nothing. built out and everything is all done. And, and I just feel like this last piece of it is like, shit, if you like, they could, you could literally replicate, they, they could make a digital copy of you, maybe a biological copy of you. I don't know why they'd want to, but. Uh, Look, yeah. those, uh, those actors, uh, those wealthy folks in Hollywood, ain't, uh, they're stupid, but they're not, uh, they're not, not craven. <laughs> they they, they yeah. went on, they went on strike to protect their AI images because they see what's going on right here. Yeah. Uh, there's a question here. Do I think it's too late to turn back? 
and this is where Jeff, you and I may disagree, but I got to go with, no, it's not too late. I, I just, I, I think an essential part of being a human is optimism and hope and, 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 uh, you know, I can't live in a world where there's no chance. So I do no, not no. think it's too late to turn back. It um, is the, you know, it even is if Ellie Eisen gives tells, us a, it's two, not too a chance, right? Ellie, even Ellie Eisen, who is the doomiest of the doom, gives us a 2% chance. So that's double, that's double 1%, by the way. Right. That's, no, that we're, is, we're in, uh, we're in absolute agreement. It's the premise of the book. It's the premise of everything else that uh, it is our obligation and our duty and our only option uh, to stand up against this now because uh, there will be no other time. It's on us and uh, the leaders are the people that we're talking to in the audience right now. It's not you and it's not me. Uh, yeah. we're, old, we're old guys that can uh, he can act pretty good and some of us can edit video good and some of us write okay and, and stuff like that. But we're not the leaders. The leaders are in this community. These are the people uh, who have been, who are, and have been the victims of it and they have to decide whether they want to be free from it or not if they were going to walk into the cage if they're going to walk down the chute then we're done uh, that's why these people are my heroes that's why i get up every day because i'm with you john i'm not giving up i will not quit we do not have to uh, we will never give up on our children's lives uh and and but that's why i'm also fearless and and i suppose you should be too there may be people look there's people with trillions of dollars invested in this there may be somebody that wants to rub you or me out for the things that we're saying someday. And that's not unlikely because we're standing in the way of people uh, running a scam on the globe for the rest of the short time that humanity's here. I don't care, John. Like the only thing that matters right now is that we speak the truth to people that can do something about it. That's our wonderful audience. Thank you all for your service, by the way. What do you think, John? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, uh, I, I, um, you know, I see over here in the comments, hope is a dangerous drug. I think hopelessness is even more dangerous. You know, I, I, I can't I imagine. Would, it. I'm not giving I up. Would well, stay like high alive. on hope till my last breath before hitting the pipe of hopelessness. No way. We have nowhere to go. We have nowhere yeah. to go. This is the thing. This is we're being occupied by by technology. We have nowhere to go. We, we we only have our home right here and our local community. And if they take our money supply away and take our technology away, we just need to say wave bye bye and just have our own community and start bartering and start uh, figuring out how to live and breathe the air that we have left. If we become slaves to technology, it's all over. Uh, there is no air to breathe. There is no nothing left. So I'm I'm opting for the fight for human survival and uh, talking to people about what's happening until my very end i hope you guys last a fucking hell of a lot uh, longer than i do okay now let's hope we're all here for some time i mean I, you know like it matters the difference between one year two years 20 years 30 years 50 years 100 years is that's a big, big difference <laughs> for the rest of humanity for what for the, the first hundred million don't count we start yeah. we started yeah, 100 million this one you believe um jeff do you believe the the sort of utopian dream stuff that like you know ellie Eiser says that if if we could that we're 50 60 years away from ending disease poverty hunger you know hunger all of yeah. these things uh are right there but just as we are perfectly human we're about to fucking we'll blow it screw it up we're gonna coog it we're gonna coog it yeah, <laughs> that's, themselves, but that's we're Northwest for really, Washington State, but we're it's right it. there. But so here's the problem. Here's the problem, and and we've noted it from the start. Is you said it in your last podcast. It's the conflict of interest. Corporate AI. I, I came up with the term corporate AI, and in chapter four of my book is will corporate AI kill us? And and Eliezer is is featured in uh in the book in chapter four, and the answer is yeah, probably it will, uh, because because it is corporate AI. All of the AI that has been developed on in the world so far has been created to exploit humans, not help humans. Could AI be used to create a utopic society where we, uh, where we used it exclusively for applications that benefited humans? Well, yeah, that's possible. We'd have to do a lot of studying and make sure we didn't fuck that up too. Oh but, my God. but it's possible, but, but that's not where the money is. All 100% of the money is in the kill us all category. 
<laughs> this made me crazy. I heard Altman do an interview a week ago. I just watched it last night. And it's like a 30 minute thing at a Bloomberg thing. He's on stage last week talking about, you know, whatever the hell he's talking about. And, and all he refers to when she talks to him about like, you know, what are your goals? What are you the things? He talks about delighting users. The product is really delighting our users. So that's, that's the people that are living in the New Zealand bunkers after we're all dead. No, so, but I mean, I guess like, he, he's willing to take a risk that all of our children die, uh, not to cure cancer or yeah. climate change yeah. or end poverty. Yeah. He's doing he it to delight users. Delight the viewers. Yeah, yeah. Well, the advertising, the, re the advertising revenues could be through the roof if they're all delighted, uh, John. Curing cancer could also, <laughs> sell, you know, you probably sell some cancer cure. You probably no, sell some climate change cure. No, the health insurance companies are all a scam. There's no money. The health insurance companies ruin that scam. You can't run a scam on a scam. You can't run organized crime on organized crime. Here's the problem, John. See, I'm an organized crime expert. I see like everything's an inside job. Everything's an inside job. Open AI is an inside job. The finance industry, inside job. Housing industry, inside job. All Big that apps. requires a lot of coordination though, which is where, where you know, you got two crooks, right? You got two crooks on the corporate board and they're trying to coordinate their crookery. One of them is going to try to take the other guy's shit. No, like, well, yeah, but they're all, but they're, but, they're mostly, but they're mostly all crooks. I mean, look, they're, they're mostly all crooks, especially at the CEO level. These guys are all approved by yeah, BlackRock. But, but they're on the same team. To truly conspire, you need all the crooks to be aligned with each other. And then you know, on what? Crook on, a, on what? Well, anything, any kind of, cons you know, they're, they're, well, Corporate America is conspiring to do this or that or whatever it is. Well, like, don't, but here's the problem is that for AI, for AI, you got, you talked about it with Roman for AI, you only need 50, 50 people to conspire to end the world. You might only need one. You might only need one guy that really knows how to use this program. And he goes, but you know what? I hate my parents. Of millions of I hate my parents so damn much. I'm putting this sucker down. Right? I, we're not there yet. You still need hundreds of millions of dollars of compute to to play at, at the frontier level of AI. You know, like you million, can't do hundreds it from of millions business. of dollars. You're just singing their song. They got unlimited money. They I know, but I'm just saying that like, I can't of, from my basement do a training run that is going to enable me to create chat no, GPT no. five or six. There's it's only the, the it's for the elite. Thing. It's for the elite. But look, yeah. uh, Enron Enron Musk wants Tesla to unite with uh, with uh, Twitter. So you got your Tesla Twitter, uh, oh, and then they'll put a they'll, they'll, put, they'll, they'll put one of the flamethrowers on it, uh, and then he'll be you'll be doing the Tesla Twitter Uber uh, rideshare flamethrower car for uh, the for the apocalypse. Now, we'll all be I do believe that, one person can pull off a, a large scale conspiracy. So for like Elon Musk, right? He controls all the satellites. Mm -hmm. And he bought Twitter to control the conversation. So he yep. controls the hardware and the software of global communication. Well, I mean, US and China basically own global communications. Europe Europe uh, has antitrust yeah, laws. They kinda... US and China will never agree, like, here's what we want to do. Oh, no. Musk in his, in his boardroom by himself could say, here's what I want to do. Oh, and yeah. There. Yeah, I, I, I think, look, it's going to be private industry that ends the world. Uh, it, it's going to be. It's 100%. going to be private industry that ends the world, and they weave, they wield the they wield the uh, power of of nations anyway. We, we talk about this in you know, OpenAI again. They're doing financial shenanigans, but in the in the gig app space, all of the major players, all of the major monopolists, not only are they monopolists, but they're all owned by BlackRock and Vanguard and State Street and Saudi sure. Arabia and China. Like literally, none of this is american production or money all the all these gig apps are is a parasite they're just an ai parasite but they came in during a pandemic when everybody had their head down into their cell phone and they walked us right into it and i mean that's where this is the one thing and i i don't know what do you think i don't know if it's like this with agi but for gig apps our trajectory of the human race changed uh for for what we call app slavery in this community with the with the uh, pandemic because in no other scenario would uh, corporate America have tried to take all of these services into rural and suburban America because they're not profitable. But the, but the pandemic walked America right into it 
uh, it's it's very uncanny how it turned out. It didn't turn out well. Um, what do you, and and I think probably the pandemic also had a lot to do with the with the downfall of a lot of restaurants, corporate America, and everything else. It just opens up uh, more desperation to be willing to risk the American uh, economy and the human race on AI. Yeah. How about this? I'll tell you this, Jeff. There's one argument that I've heard. One that I think defeats all of our arguments. There's only one. Um, and and uh, the anti-AI, it's going to kill us all stuff. And that is if you say the climate change is so urgent that this time scale on climate change is even before AI. So say AI, AI is a 50-year problem and climate change is a 30-year problem. And, you know, we're going to have two feet of, of seawater in all the cities nice. in 10 years. And the only way to, you know, we as a people have neither the political will nor the technological know-how to solve climate change on our own. The only way we're going to solve climate change is with AGI. I believe that. I, I believe that, you know, for the, we, we, we can't get our politics together and we don't know enough about physics to really solve this problem. So you yeah. get the unknown laws of physics with so, the most persuasive force in the history of earth and you can so make, like you know you can save the planet but if that if you say what if we happen first maybe there's a case to be made for we need to make agi to solve climate change because we're all going to die from that anyway in like a 50 to 150 year range ish yeah what i mean we could also what if, what if we figured out the like what if what if agi determines that 10 nuclear bombs will do the trick where do we drop them oh absolutely <laughs> cuz that's going to be the solution it's like we came up with it it's a, it's it's 10 strategic nuclear bombs will fix the will fix the uh global warming problem it's like poof congratulations you fixed global warming uh, yeah totally it's just, or it's this, like um you know there's no more uh there's no more travel of any kind on an on a something with an engine. Yeah, right. Exactly. You're now you're now uh, you're, you're, you're walkers, horse in a buggy. <laughs> well, this is one of the things that we say over and over. Any AI that can employ you can also unemploy you. Any AI that can give you the right to drive can take away your right to drive. Any AI that can give you the right to get an income can take away that right to get an income. And we're having that already. There's no fairness in in being fired by AI or in being not hired by AI because there's no humans involved. This is just all, we're just all digital widgets. This is the thing that, you know, you're talking to a group of people here that has been dehumanized to the point of slavery by by technology. We're, I'm telling you, we're the first best victims. We're, we're going to be your biggest damn fans because we're all going to watch every damn one of your podcasts and take it out to the world because there's millions of us and we're getting killed first. We are. Yeah. I we, lo we love you, John. We love you, John. Thank, Thank you for everything, all the work. Go anywhere to anywhere, talk to anybody. Like, I, I'm of the opinion that, like, give me one person and if I can talk to them and convince them that this is important, I've done something in that hour that was worth my while. Where's the next one? Yep. Well, uh, I want to talk to you offline about uh, my book and stuff because uh, we got the same mission. I ain't in this for the money. I figure I'll be long dead first. You can give it to my kids uh, if they're around, if you're around, if we're around. So uh, we, we need to talk offline and uh, collaborate because I'll do everything I can to help uh, promote what you're doing. Awesome. My only objective, the only object, this is a non-monetized channel, by the way, John. Uh, we could be monetized, but we're not. Uh, so when we share your videos or, and everything, we're not. You're in no way ever profiting from anything I'm you're doing. Although I, I, I right. think you're like me. It's like, hey, if we see the human race, you can have the, you can have the two dollars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you I, can I, have I, it. Your eyeballs. That's all. Yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah. No, well, that's what that's what you. Well, you got our hearts in mind. We're the three hundred. I'm telling you, we're, we're there's another uh, there's another show. A guy named Jeff, different Jeff. I'm I'm JTB. Uh, he's Jeff. Is he? uber jeep arizona is his name and you should check out his channel for your research because he is also he's on the rideshare side where i studied doordash and and all of this side and kind of the overall artificial intelligence he's really a driver advocate and a driver and they're ready for revolt they've been taken down to nothing they're basically ready to start passing out their business cards and just go don't call uber anymore just call us we're done so this this thing's going down john and uh you're going to be at the center of it congratulations welcome to our community Awesome. It's great, I, to, I could, great to talk with you. Great, great to, you know, interact with everybody online. I appreciate you all your questions and, and uh, I hope you'll, I hope you'll come in again. Absolutely.
Yeah. Okay, good, good. Well, uh, I will be in touch with you, John. Uh, and uh, I'd love love to have a chance to talk with you offline. Uh, is anybody, did they, if anybody has any questions for John before uh, he goes, do you have time for a question or two? Yeah, I'll take a question or two, sure. Yeah, if anybody's got a question, go ahead and throw it in the chat. Uh, John's, uh, this very uh, podcast that we just watched, uh, it, it's linked in the show notes for this uh, show, so you can go watch the whole thing yourself. Subscribe to John's channel. Uh, most absolutely, here it is. Actually, we can watch that uh, if I know where I is. Here we go. So this was, this is John's channel right here. This is the For Humanity podcast. John is the host. He's got uh He's got some great trailers. If you want to just share something with family member for a couple minutes. I mean, one of the things we talk yeah. about, John, is that we have to be the people that teach other people. That's what this show is about, is people learning, uh, sharing. If you know, if you if you got adult kids, if you got teenage kids, if you got a uh, family that you think uh, might want to join this fight to to stay alive, uh, I'd share this podcast. I think it's really well titled, John. I love the For Humanity podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I see one question here. Who's controlling Sam Altman? I don't know, man. I I I uh I don't know. I, I feel like he might be doing his own thing for his own crazy reasons. Like, you know, I feel like these guys believe that it's inevitable that this is gonna happen. And so they're like, if not me, who? Uh there's some cool. chance that I make God and become a God controller. Uh, so shit, let's spin the wheel. He you know? said he said those very frightening words himself. So it's not us. Uh, it's not us making up uh, hyperbole. Yeah, I wish it was. Um, someone who I would encourage everybody to check out is Connor Leahy. He, mm. I think, is the um, CEO of Conjecture, which is a, a British uh, AI company that is only working on alignment research. Um, and he, I think is probably the best articulator of these, uh, issues and, and topics of anybody in the game. Um, Connor's got the, uh, Connor's got kind of the longest hair and the beard. Yeah, he's he's kind of the yeah. He went we, on, um, he went on bankless, which is like a crypto podcast. Yeah. And, we watched, uh, we watched the full, uh, yeah. full Eliezer, uh, interview on bankless. That's in my book. Check out, okay. So watch, watch Connor on bankless. Cause he blew oh. their minds and, and he, I think I he came before Eliezer, he, he came on and they were like, you know, we're going to talk about how, uh, AI affects crypto. And within like five minutes, that whole show was scuttled and the right. show was about existential risk. And they right. were the same thing happened with Eliezer. It's like, oh, uh, we yeah. didn't talk about crypto at all. It's like, uh, uh, and the guys look, they were shell shocked. And I put that in the book. I mean, it's, I, I put a content warning on that for real. I tell people like, if you're, yeah. if you are uh, struggling with suicidal ideations and things like that, you need to be really careful with this information because it is so very sobering to hear some of the smartest people in the world talk about the threat to our children growing up. I mean, this is no joke, folks. This is just the hardest, most awful stuff. I never thought I'd be, you know, sitting on the air talking to my friends at 55 thinking like, yeah, I probably won't see 56. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we'll so if you all subscribe, get your friends to subscribe. And as you're making the case for this stuff, like if you have a buddy that you talk to occasionally and you're like, you know, I've been telling you this stuff, they're not getting it. Just send them episode one, see what the fuck happens. Exactly. That's it saying you got, he's got some previews in there. Uh, even the, even the previews uh, are like two minutes long, but they tell a very compelling story where anybody's going to want to hear more. So John, we'll, we'll have you back. Uh, we'll have you back early and often. And, and we're going to uh, follow up on Connor on the Bankless podcast as well. Thanks so much for your time and, and for Absolutely. everything that you're doing for the community, John. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you all. Everybody have a great week. Thank you, John. Have a great afternoon. Okay, thanks. See you. Well, that was great. Thank you so much, John Sherman. Uh, thank you, uh, friends, audience, for uh, being part of that. Great opportunity to talk to somebody that's uh, that's got wonderful viewpoints. And I, I you know, if, if myself, my self criticism there, uh, 
for I probably should have said it with John on. There were things I wanted I wanted John to share his thoughts with us too, but I very wanted, very much wanted, as you could hear, John to understand uh, where we're coming from as gig economy workers, because I don't think we have been figured into the equation of humanity as the first best victims. And I really wanted John to understand that. And I think it's, uh, I'm real excited that we got to have that conversation. Real excited that we got to have that conversation because that, uh, that is going to be key to, to our potential for success. Yes, it is heavy stuff. Uh, thank you, my friend, Bigfoot Dasher and everybody for uh, doing this whole thing. If anybody has any questions or thoughts you want to throw in there, I'm I'll uh, I'll give them a read. Hello again, it's me. It's just me. Uh, we're still having a show. It's a good show. I like the show. That was a very important uh, discussion. I'm glad to watch it again with you, and understand uh, more. This is just this is just the heaviest of heavy stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right, Stephen Arrow. Employment is now just a little bit of a club, and you ain't in it. Let's see what we got here. Let's see. Okay. So, um, sorry, I had something I had to look at there. A little bit of uh, dead air time. So, our friend, uh, our friend Mike, has uh, mental metal. Mental Metal Mike has gone through some uh, hard times here recently. He lost his uh, beloved uh, dog. And uh, Mike sent me an email yesterday. Uh, this is not something that I would normally do, but, uh, you know, there is no normal. There is no normal. Every uh, Everything is individual, and, and I know Mike and uh, care about Mike. And uh, so Mike uh, lost his his beloved dog and uh, has been going through a real hard time. And Mike is right now uh, doing a uh, small campaign so that he can get help with uh, uh, with adopting a new companion. I'm going to read you uh, the email that he sent to me. Y'all can email me if you want to. I'll put my email in here. It's, you know, it's all public. Everybody's got my email. You send me something. I read it. I read stuff. Now, remember, we're, we're not, we're all poor here in the sewer. Uh, so, you know, we're pretty judicious with what we do that talks about money here. Uh, but I feel like our friend Mike needs a little bit of help, and I feel like this is a small amount of help that we might be able to give Mike uh, that would make a big difference in a man's life. And uh, I care about Mike, and you do too, and there ain't that many of us. Uh, let's see, what do you say? This came in uh, yesterday, and I, I read it last night when I was in bed, and I, I, I thought we'd address it on the show here this morning. Sorry to share this sad news with you in the gig community, but I lost my dog and best friend this morning when he was hit by a fuel truck. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mike. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm on fixed income and cannot afford the vet bill and to have him cremated. Man, Mike, I'm so sorry, man. Uh, to not have the money to take care of our pets is one of the coolest parts of America right now. 
It just is. I started a GoFundMe page. If you are able to share this link for uh, the YouTube page, Waterbong Willie, I would be thankful. I posted a short along with a link to my home channel. If YouTube doesn't shut me down again, but I have only three subscribers, don't have family and very few friends, my choice to share this with. Any help from the gig community would help. Thank you uh, for reading this and God bless. YouTube sent me this after I appealed, after taking another look. We can confirm your channel does not violate our community guidelines. Uh, fuck them and fuck Pedro and Eli. Yeah, well, sounds like uh, Mike got taken down there for a minute. We're not going to worry about that. Um, Mike replied back uh, this morning, just now. Uh, I don't know if he's watching or not. Maybe he is, maybe he ain't. Uh, oh, this is Pravada Mike. This is Pravada Mike. This is not, okay, my apologies, Mike. This is not Mental Metal Mike. This is uh, this is Pravada Mike. Pravada Mike's right here uh, with us right now. I love Pravada Mike. Nice to see you. Uh, Robota Mike said, thank you, Jeff. A neighbor came by with a backhoe and we buried my dog in my yard. But I would love to adopt a dog from the ASPCA of Norwich, New York. If you could help me raise the money to adopt. It's empty and quiet in the house and I need another friend. The cost of adoption is $150 plus tax. My GoFundMe page is asking for $200. My new GoFundMe page is uh, this. I think that's the one I got up there. Uh, I knew you, Thomas, and others would be good people, and that's why I followed you guys. Thank you for your support. Well, Mike, it's uh, it's uh, nice to have you in the community, and I'm so sorry for the for uh, the loss of your of your uh, dog to a accident with a fuel truck. That is tragic, and I know that not being able to do uh, the financial things that we want to be able to do for our pets and for our families. So very painful, so very painful. See, that's the thing that they don't understand. And I went through the same thing with my senior dog, Mike. Uh, they don't understand that we will go completely, uh, we'll go homeless if we have to, to do what we can for our pets. And many of us have done their uh, and while we're in poverty, we've spent our last last dollars uh, on our pets because uh, we're human. They can treat us as in, they can treat us as less than human, but we are human. Uh, so, friends, you probably know I don't got two nickels to rub together. That's a fact. Uh, we'll worry about the book issue coming up. You know, money is useful for some things. You know, mostly for fighting for our lives. Uh, Here's the thing. Yeah, there's a lot of times. Uh, one thing I don't want to do, I don't want to send Mike on a goose chase, right? Mike's probably, Mike's a smart guy who's done his research. And uh, and I'm sure Mike knows what. Uh, hopefully, Mike, you've, you've applied to programs for uh, low-income individuals. Uh, or you've even applied to the ASPCA for a, for a low income. But I know, you know, sometimes they don't want to adopt a dog to somebody with no income because they're afraid you won't be able to take care of it. So there's a double-edged sword there. Anyway, I'm going to leave it to you, Mike. I trust Mike. I trust Mike is asking for a reasonable sum uh, in a reasonable way. Uh, Mike, thanks for uh, trusting our community to do that. Anybody that, that wants to and can help Mike, uh, I think that's a wonderful thing. Let's make sure that this uh, links works properly. Uh, I'll double check that link. Yep. All right. Link works. Link works. Oh, I should probably should have done. There's probably a better link because it had a share link. I did it. I did it the hard way. Let's see if the share link gets me a different link. Uh, what? Oh, yeah, just copy. There you go. There's a shorter link. Hey, Vartan. Good morning. How are you? Nice to see you. I've been thinking about you a lot. I've been thinking about you a lot. 
I got it wrong. Oh, darn it. Oh, darn it. I had it almost, Mike. I had it almost. But I, I hate it when it does that. It doesn't give us a space. And then it just lumps it all together. That's a little better. That's a little better. That should do it. All right, Mike. Well, uh, good luck on that, Mike. Keep us posted. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I know, buddy. I know it's a busy time, busy schedule. Uh, let's uh, let's take a look at uh, Mike's video here real quick. I wanted to do that, but I... Uh, Video, divorce attorney, home. Oh, I don't see it, Mike. I don't see it. I don't see no. Oh, maybe there's a video in the thing. Am I being? Am I being daft? Am I being daft. Let me look. Hold on. Let's see. Okay. Where's the support? Create it there. Share. Donate now. All right. Well, this all looks good. This all good looks good, Mike. I don't see any video, but uh, but that all looks real good. Anybody that can help Mike out, that's got a big heart for the pups. Uh, you feel free to go ahead and do that. Thanks for uh, thanks for uh, doing that, Mike, and and uh, our. Our condolences for your terrible loss. That, that sucks. Now, how long have Homo sapiens been around? It seems like we've been around somewhere around a couple hundred thousand years. So what we're looking at is people that are so very selfish that they are willing to end uh, a couple hundred thousand years of Homo sapien uh history with their artificial insanity and it should be called artificial insanity not artificial intelligence because it is the insane elements of the human race the insane elements and all all that insane means is is the lack of sanity so if it's not if it's not sane it's insane and artificial intelligence is purely the insane uh, elements of the human race brought to life by corporations, which means predation, uh, gaming, and winning at all costs. And that's that's you. That means that you lose. You are the all costs, and they are willing to pay the cost. They're willing to pay the financial cost of killing you. If they get sued for a few hundred million or a few hundred billion or money doesn't matter, if they get taken to court after your uh, genocide, that's just the cost of doing business. They're prepared to bear that cost. You you have to understand you do not exist to these companies. Literally do not exist. The only thing they can think of is how they get you out of their equation altogether, even on the extraneous aspect, because then they can really start profiting off of humanity. Then they can really start focusing on customer satisfaction once they can get the troublesome uh, humans out of the way. We are the problem to be solved. AI is solving you. AI is solving you. 
let's take a look uh, real quick here since we enjoyed that interview with John. I certainly did. Let's take a look at John's uh, For Humanity podcast and take, let's take a look at his shorts. Not his short. We looked at the short already with the, uh, the humans are dead. The humans are dead. Let's take a look at the uh, trailers for each episode, shall we? Let's do that. Let's do that, shall we? Because these are good. These are tight. You get a lot of info in these things. And they, these are each just like two minutes. So they're real hot, hot takes. <laughs> Not hot takes, true takes. Here we go. Here's number one. Something that's smarter than Show me the world. Show me the happy world. Where we, where we can build something smarter than us and not, and not just immediately die. How can we build something that's smarter than us and not just immediately die? That is the question. It's an asteroid that we are building ourselves. Literally everyone on Earth will die. A percentage chance doom might be somewhere between 10 and 25%. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Turn it on. Check whether it will do a bad thing. If it does a bad thing, it's too late. It's smarter than you. How do you... Sh you can't stop it. We get one chance. Almost nobody is talking about it. There is no need to create a system we cannot control, which very likely over time to kill everyone. Our generation, those people here right now, we're going to be the last humans by our own choice and doing? We're currently going headlong towards doom. How could anyone do this we're living out the science fiction we grew up with it's weird you know within the tech world giving up those childhood science fiction fantasies that we grew up with it's just really hard for people Okay, cool. That was uh, that was uh, episode number one trailer. Let's go for episode number two trailer. Video. Now I got that song stuck in my head. The humans are dead. The humans are dead. I poked them. They're dead. The alignment problem. Where's the uh? Right. Trailer, okay, episode two. Okay, this has got to be the trailer. The prospect of lightning AI did not look anywhere near this hopeless 20 years ago. On the current trajectory that we currently are on, things are going very badly, and very bad things are going to happen and are already beginning to happen. The alignment problem. So I want to be very clear. I do not think we have yet discovered a way to align a super powerful system. If you design an AI system to help me spell check my essay and instead it kills me, I don't think you have a successful spell checker AI. Here's a very common sub goal which makes a lot of sense. Um, gain more control. If they are unplugged, they're not playing any chess, they don't longer meet their goal, so the chess playing goal leads to keeping yourself from being unplugged. If the person can persist, well, they say, oh, this agent wants to unplug me. That's totally against my, my goal of chess. I better stop them. Stopping them, however, it may lead to murder. Murder over a game of chess. I would not underestimate the difficulty of alignment of models that are actually smarter than us, of models that are capable of misrepresenting their intentions. All of the companies are racing to get to AGI faster is it going to kill us what is it going to do with us what happens to us humans uh when we hit that point so obviously we would like to stay in control um and obviously there's a problem with less intelligent things controlling more intelligent things so open ai and deep mind was a small collection of folks who are brave enough to talk about agi um in the face of mockery. We don't get mocked as much now.
So this big black box where we just put some stuff in, some weird magic happens, and then something comes out. Just a big black box that we don't know what's going on inside that can kill us all. Cool. We have no idea how they work. We have no idea what they're going to do. ChatGPT4 is an alien actor, a fairly crude imitator. At some point, as it grows smarter than a human, the line between acting and reality disappears. Hey, you have got your interpretability tools, and they say that your current AI system is plotting to kill you. Now, it is definitely a good step one, right? Yeah, what's step two? Here's uh, here's the uh, fourth podcast, Dr. Roman Yampolsky, uh, part one interview. And Roman uh, Yampolsky is is one of the sources that I learned much of what I uh, built my foundation for AI knowledge upon. Well over a year ago now, he's a professor, Dr. Roman Yam Polsky from University of Louisville, or Louisville University, I can't remember. Louisville University, I believe. They might be projecting it on other software they have experience with, so how would Microsoft Word kill you? I mean, I can just... They might be projecting it on other software they have experience with, so how would Microsoft Word kill you? I mean, I can just turn off the computer. What do you see as that singularity threshold, is it? Um... So then that happens. We don't know what's next. It's like saying, okay, in a year, aliens are coming. We know they are super smart. They have advanced technology. That's all we know. Now, how do I prepare for it? What do I do about it? It's not obvious. Are they friendly? Are they going to help us? Can we negotiate? Can we control them? None of those questions are easily answerable. Since numbers in the 70% of people who are not supporting creating a super intelligence, do you think the AI companies care at all about public opinion about their product? Well, they, they probably don't, but also polling is very easy to manipulate. If you ask the right question, you can get any type of answer you want. On top of it, the people you're polling have no idea what you're asking them. They have zero understanding. They think, most people think that AI researchers, AI developers know what they're doing. They're engineers, engineering a product. So they, they don't have comprehension to provide a meaningful answer. It's like asking consent from a five-year-old. Like It just doesn't mean anything. Sure, sure. Because nobody fully understands it. So how can you consent? The experts don't fully understand, the people making the systems don't understand how they work, what they're capable of, so nobody can fully consent to having this experiment performed on them. Out of 8 billion humans, no one can say, I give my informed consent to have this technology released in my environment and I'm willing to take the consequences because nobody knows what they're agreeing to. Whoa, whoa, nobody knows what they're agreeing to. I love that. I've been I've been writing that and saying that I've been using that informed consent uh, since before I, I published the book. Uh, nobody knows what they're agreeing to. They're just they're just trusting these corporations who have proven to be anything but trustworthy, anything, literally anything but trustworthy. Holy crap. They just did that. The, the level to which we've given up control of our humanity uh, is just stunning. It just absolutely beyond uh, beyond our comprehension. Uh, but we're going to have to try and comprehend it anyway. Here's uh, 
episode uh, number five, part two, uh, with Dr. Roman Yampolsky. How could you know one of these guys like look themselves in the mirror and be like, "Yes, I'm going to the office today to do this." And to me, oh. a part of it seems like, well, if it goes the way people fear, uh, there'll be no accountability. I'm not going to have to answer to anybody about it. So. Let's go I'm ahead. not saying that's what they think, but here's one kind of game theoretic way uh, of looking at it. So if I think it's going to happen, we cannot solve that problem, it's uncontrollable, and it will cause existential crises. Saying that will not give me any benefits because no one's going to be there to say, you were right. Do you think it is a fair statement to say that these guys, the guys at the head of these companies are, are the most important humans who've ever lived? I mean, it really depends on how you measure importance, right? Are they replaceable? If they were gone, would anything change in the direction of this industry? Can they be replaced? Can Dario be replaced with his sister? I don't know. Seems like uh, they kind of subject to those same incentives and profit. Uh, most people, they uh, become prominent in this field by first contributing to capabilities significantly and then saying, oh, this is very bad. We shouldn't have done that. Do you think the guys who are doing all the capability stuff are ever going to get to that, ooh, it's really bad? But will it be too late at that point? I mean, at some point you definitely get there, but it may be a point of no return. So you think any governmental regulation is essentially theater? Well, again, I want to see an example of a technological issue where a government's regulation made a difference. So spam and viruses are obvious examples. Is there anything a bad actor could do that could create extinction? So I, I think at lower level intelligence, bad actor can provide malevolent payload and malevolent goals. I think at full super intelligence, it doesn't matter who created it. If it's uncontrolled and independent, it's completely irrelevant what the origins are. It will start from basic first principles of physics and discover the whole universe of knowledge and decide what to do on its own. Well, that's uh, real compelling stuff. We'll look forward to having John Sherman back on the podcast again. That is most certain. We will look forward to that. Uh, he, he does a great job on that. I'm looking forward to as soon as that podcast number six comes out, we'll be having it on the show. And I'll be asking John to come right back on with us again and, and talk to us about it. We are all on the same team. And, and one of the things that you guys noticed, and, and I will note as well, is that uh, people are not aware of our plight. People are worried about this AGI coming out because it's going to destroy the middle class and potentially destroy the world. Uh, people don't know that we've already been destroyed. That's why we're down here in the sewer. We've already been marked for death uh, by this gig app, corporate cabal and scam. And so we've pointed out all of the reasons why we can't possibly trust these awful actors like uh, the corporate shills of the gig, gig tube, uh, gig tube con. And it was a con. It was just a con. They're just running a con. It's just a pyramid scheme. Uh, maybe some of them were ignorant in the beginning. Some of them were ignorant in the beginning, but they certainly know now. They 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 proved they know. Uh, they knew about the glitch. They knew that this is just a game that you're being conned, and and they were telling you that I didn't exist and I was a liar and everything else. And that's because they didn't want you to hear the truth. They would rather have you die and have the human race die than lose their uh, place on the top of the pyramid. I, you know, I wish there was a kinder way to put such blunt, uh, you know, blunt uh, descriptions, but this is a wartime. You are now uh, the 300 that are fighting for humanity. Nobody else is, a, is as aware of what AI can do to a community and to a people as you are. It's just a fact. And, uh, 
you know, when I started this project that I called Full Dash Closure, that was my goal, uh, is that I knew nobody else uh, was calling this out yet. And I was going to be the person that would write the book and create the words and the terminology to teach you what's going on. And we've done that now. So you could actually be done with me now and everything would be fine. Everything would be fine. You guys are now in charge. You could be done with me. I can end the show. Thank you. It's been wonderful. See you later. But that's the way you want it, right? You don't want it to be dependent upon any one individual. You don't want to be, no sane individual wants to be a king. Let's tell you, and no sane individual wants to be a king. No sane individual wants to be a cult leader. No sane individual wants to be anything uh, in 2023 except for a decent human. But there's a lot of insane individuals out there. And the insane individuals are... Uh, are the ones that got all the money and the resources. Well, why? Because they were willing to be insane. They were willing to sell out their fellow man. They're willing to cheat, lie, scheme, be involved in organized crime, be involved with corporate AI that will potentially destroy humanity. Why? Well, somebody's got to do it. Somebody's going to do it. So we might as well get in on the scam, right? Might as well get the fuck in on the scam. That's the theory. It's not a fucking joke. And you're the first victims. Congratulations. But at least at least somebody's here to tell you, look, man, I don't want to give myself too much credit in this space, but but uh, I've been working to tell you uh, against people uh, literally trying to rub me out and figuratively trying to rub me out uh, since I started this project. It's been real strange. It's been a real fucking strange ride to tell people the truth and be attacked uh, physically, mentally, digitally. You know, by a whole bunch of bad actors like the Pedros of the world denying my existence, literally denying my existence like the fascists they are. It's been a real strange fucking ride. Uh, but I feel like I feel like we achieved something. I feel like we got to this point today where you now understand John Sherman and John Sherman now understands that you exist. And uh, Uber Jeep Arizona understands what's going on. And, and you guys all. Uh, you guys all understand what's going on. So they can't, they can't just focus on discrediting me anymore. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to discredit me or they wanted to discredit uh, Brian from DoorDash Sucks and Gig Apps Exposed and DoorDash Gig Economy Police who was out there telling you the truth. Uh, was Brian 100% right all the time? No, and he's the first guy to tell you that. It's very hard to be 100% right in a, in a world of illusion, which is the world we live in in a game world where they're all lying to you brian was brian was right there in the wheelhouse man brian was right there in the wheelhouse and has been the whole time uh everybody owes him a great debt uh from humanity for standing up and getting us to this point same thing with thomas glitched ass schubeck uh same thing uh with thomas man thomas stepped up and he saw the con and he called it out and he made them all accountable to the lies that they told you. And one of the reasons we're all here today is because uh, Thomas Glitch back. Thomas is definitely the reason I'm here today because Thomas's long broadcasts uh, in defiance of the, of the gig app corporate cabal and the little gangster shit mob uh, of the Pedros and the, and the Zacks and the Kims of the world, little shit mob gets together at their con glitch in uh, Denver, you know, uh, he held them accountable. Brian held them accountable. They're just big meanie pants for holding them accountable. And I've been in this community uh, for, for quite a long time now, you know, first just commenting, but then taking a more active part and then uh, seeing what, uh, you know, with with uh, Glitchgate, I had to become a more public figure because I had to explain to you that that we now had proof where I could show you. I knew Glitchgate was something I could show you that would prove to you that you're being conned. That's why I was so excited about that. I don't think they bargained for how much you would learn from Get Glitchgate and how much we would form as a community from Glitchgate. And and there's a lot of people that had a lot to do with that. Uh, some people that that we some people that are on our are on our you know, happy holiday list and some people that we think are a bunch of dickbags. Either way, there's some people that had a lot to do 
with uh, getting Glitchgate out there and holding people accountable. And that's a great thing. Um, I said it before, but I'll say it again. We can't kick anybody out of this club. We're in the sewer. You can't kick anybody out of the sewer. There's nowhere to go. You can't even, if you dig a hole in the sewer, that's just going to fill up too. So we got to accept everybody. We got to accept people we like. We got to accept people we don't like. We got to accept, you know, uh, Trumpers we love, God help us, uh, or Trumpers we hate. We got to accept them too. We got to accept everybody that is willing to perpetuate the human race right now. Uh, because that is the goal that we need to have, regardless of who you are, where you come from, what color you are, your gender, whether you're an immigrant, whether you're a, a resident or a citizen of the United States, your life is under threat right now. And nobody has told you the truth about that. Nobody wants you to know these things. Uh, how do I know? Well, I fucking know real fucking well. Uh, and and I've, I've fought like hell to get to this point. Uh, without a fucking penny from anybody because that's the only way I can stay free is to just avoid all them fuckers with money like the plague because they are the plague. They are the plague. They are the fucking plague. The plague ain't going to save you from the plague. That don't happen. That just don't happen. The con men ain't going to save you from the con. The corporate sellouts ain't going to save you from the corporate sellouts. BlackRock ain't going to save you from BlackRock. AI ain't going to save you from AI. That's for damn sure. AI is going to kill you one way or the other. You're first to go. Lots of good news for you. But, again, here's the point. Here's the point. It's not over yet. We don't have to go if we refuse to get in line. If we if we start the log outage, if we uh, take these gig apps down, if we take these gig app uh, gig tubers down, these liars that are lying, nobody should be talking about anything but the fact that these are AI uh, human exploitation machines. That is the beginning and the end of the gig economy. Uh, today is November thirtieth, twenty twenty three. It is eleven o two a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm calling it. The game's been won. There's nothing else for any gig tuber to say anymore. If you got something to say, come on my show. I dare you. I fucking dare you. Because I can prove. I can prove. This is like the Johnny Carson show when they had all the uh, all the psychics come on or whatever. Or the Amazing Randy show. Is that who it was? He'd have all the psychics come on and he knew how they did their tricks. And they'd come on and he'd just go like, yeah, that's, yeah, you're using, a, you're moving the table. You're using your breath. He'd just confound them by putting just a screen. He'd do whatever he knew would, would disrupt their trick, and they couldn't do it, right? They could only do it under the conditions that they had manufactured. And that's that's exactly what these gig tubers, these Trevor's deliveries, or any of these con men uh, have going for you, uh, is that they're, they're, they're just doing illusions before your eyes with a, with a rigged game. There's no reason you should tolerate this. You should not tolerate people selling out the human race and selling out your children. You shouldn't tolerate it. I can't take them out by myself. I can't take anybody out by myself. I sure wish I could. I sure wish I could. There's some terrible actors that are doing terrible thing, terrible things to you and uh, your chance of survival. How could, you know, one of these guys. Probably not a whole hell of a lot else to say today. I think that's what, uh, that's what we're going to stay at. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, uh, we're going to stay or stay on 20. Dealer might hit blackjack anyway, but we're going to stay. You've got to keep fighting. If you want to survive, you better be the one uh, screaming and kicking in a fight.
ain't over till it's over. Till it's over. We gotta start somewhere. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. A neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be mine? Would you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please? Won't you be my neighbor? Well, how about that? I probably just performed it uh, virtually a cappella for you, didn't I? Well, that's the way things go. That's the way things uh, things go. Ain't nothing perfect in this world. Oh, man. What can I tell you? Just do not trust artificial intelligence to do a damn thing other than uh, rub you out right now. And start standing up against these gig apps. Start the log outage. Figure out how you're going to form your own community and survive. There will be no other time for you to start doing this. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Keep your head up. Time to start fighting. You just got to know you're in the fight. I don't want to go. You don't want to go. But we all got to go. Let's go.